Hello, fellow Roo Crusaders, and welcome to our very special Halloween episode. My name is Sean Wasserkrug. With me, as always, is Brian Michaels. Um, this is a special episode for the Halloween season, and yes, I know it is September or the end of September, um, but we're doing a very special type of episode. Uh, we are basically, if anyone who's been on Facebook or Twitter for the last decade, you guys have probably seen these, these little things pop up around the holidays of like uh, watch a movie a day kind of thing. Like pick a movie based off of this subject or this tagline, and then you pick whatever movie you want to watch. Well, Brian and I were discussing this last year, uh, how cool it would be if we did this for the Halloween season with all our horror movies. Of course, we came up with this great idea a week before Halloween, and I was like, well, we can't can't do that now. <laughs> but, Let's take a pin in that one. Yeah, we'll do that next year. So here we are. We're doing it now. Um, basically, uh, what we're doing here is, like I said, we're 31 days of, of October each day is going to be a different kind of category or subcategory of a horror film or thriller or however you want to word it. And Brian's got a pick and I've got a pick. Um, choose to watch them both or choose to watch one, whichever one you want, or watch your own damn movies. These are our picks. These are what we <laughs> like. But we aren't we, – we both made a, a kind of a statement that we weren't going to try to pick the obvious ones. Now, there are certain categories where we just couldn't really get out of that. Yeah. But we tried our best to not pick, like, Nightmare on Elm Street or The Exorcist or Poltergeist. Like the yeah, one not the obvious picks. And not, not even necessarily our favorites. I mean, like, that's why I, we were talking about we're not going to call it, like, our, our best of a category, our favorite of a category. It's just, like, this is our pick that we want to suggest people watch this month. Because yeah. in some cases, it might be something you've heard of. In some cases, it might not. And that's kind exactly. of what I went for a lot of mine. A few are, a few are pretty well known. But for yeah, the most part, but I, mine, to... I went with a lot of my favorites. Now, some of them are very, very well known. Some of them are maybe lesser known, but they're not like considered, some of them are not considered like the best of all time kind of thing, which even then, I think some of the people that rank some of the best horror films of all time, those ones are usually not that good. But nonetheless, these are Brian and I's picks. If you guys want to follow along and watch those with us, definitely do so. There are definitely some picks that Brian has that I've never seen. So I'm going to definitely enjoy watching those in October. And I've got some for Brian. Um, not nearly as much though, because Brian watched some things i've never even heard of and where i'm a little more mainstream brian's a little more on the outskirts of uh you know something like a a one-eyed monster which is like what's that about look it up don't look it up guys don't look that up um, but we're gonna go ahead and start here we're gonna do our best to not give too much away because if we spoil the fucking movie then why are you guys watching the movie so We'll give brief little synopsis of why we picked it and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to do our best to not kind of give stuff away about the whole thing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in with uh, October 1st. And this, this tagline that we're picking for October 1st is pick a movie with uh, one with a home invasion. So something where the, the victims are in the house and whatever, you know, humans, monsters, whatever are invading the house. Uh, Brian, what was your pick for this? Uh, this is one of my more my more well known ones. Um, I went with "Don't Breathe" on this one, uh, the first one. I, I will say I actually did enjoy the second one, but that one's not so much a home invasion film. Um, but th this one, I mean, I, for anybody who hasn't seen it, it's basically these three twenty something people are trying to break into the house just to steal some shit, um, not knowing that the guy who lives there is a home uh, and b he's blind and he's like this, this veteran and stuff, and. Um, yeah, and the, the the intruders start becoming the uh, the victims here. So, but um, it's a great movie. It stars uh, I'm just blanked on his name, Stephen Lang. Yep, you know from Avatar. Jane Levy. And Jane Levy is kind of the main the main girl, good guy, lead, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but definitely worth checking out. Yeah, definitely one that I enjoyed the first time watching. I did not see the sequel, so if anything, I might maybe choose the sequel. But I don't think that you said that one doesn't do with the home invasion. It's not really home invasion, no. Yeah, but I do need to watch Don't Breathe too at some point. Uh, my pick is on Netflix for anyone who's a fan of the Haunting of Hill House series. Uh, this is by the director Mike Flanagan, and it stars one of the leads of his franchise shows, and that is the movie Hush. Um, it's basically about a woman. Uh, I think it's Kate Siegel who plays, who's actually Mike Flanagan's wife in real life. Um, she's basically a mute, so she's basically deaf. She can't hear anything, and it's basically about these guys. And she kind of lives on the outskirts in the woods. And basically, these guys try to break into her house, and you know, because and they kind of figure out that she is deaf, and so it kind of becomes this 
like psychological cat and mouse game between them trying to break in and her trying to survive because she can't hear them breaking in. Uh, very, very well done. I really liked it. It was one of Mike Flanagan's first directorial films. Uh, it really kind of set him down the path of being one of the better uh, horror directors out in Hollywood right now. And that one is on Netflix. Uh, so don't read on anything. D not currently. Um, I will say uh, we are filming this in September. Um, as we move into October, these streaming services might pick up a whole lot more Absolutely. horror films. But so what we're telling you now is as of September, where these are available, yeah. um, don't breathe, not available free anywhere that I can see, but Hush is on Netflix. Um, October 2nd, we are going to go with Based on a True Story. Um, my pick is hands down one of my favorite horror films of all time. Um, it's my favorite uh, exorcism film of all time, and that is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Uh, I think this movie is fantastic on so many levels. And what I usually tell a lot of people who haven't heard of it or haven't seen it is that it's not your typical, like, The Exorcist type of film. It's basically a horror film based around a court drama. And I love the atmosphere of the story. It's got uh, Laura Linney. It's got, um, I'm blanking on the rest of the damn cast right now because I don't have them pulled up. Uh, John, but, John Carpenter, yeah. Campbell, Jennifer Carpenter. Jennifer, Jennifer Carpenter uh, puts on a phenomenal performance in this as Emily Rose. Uh, and like I said, and I, I love, I love how they did this film. It's a fantastic movie. And for the most part, anyone that I've recommended it to has basically come back and told me going, damn, that movie was freaking insane and awesome. So if you haven't heard, if you haven't seen it, you definitely should check that one out. Um, Brian, what is your pick? Uh, Emily Rose, by the way, on Paramount Plus right now. Yes. Um, I picked uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, the 2003 uh, reboot version starring uh, uh, Jessica, oh Biel. Jessica Biel. Thank you. <laughs> I, I could picture I could picture the tank top. Couldn't remember the name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which Brian and I both did discuss this movie on the Weekend Crusaders uh, back when uh, we were doing that show. This is our both. This is both our favorite Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Yeah, this is by far my favorite Texas Chainsaw Massacre by film. By a mile. Um, I, I don't need to say much about this. It, it's it's one of those ones that's like loosely based on a true story, but it qualifies. Uh, unfortunately, my pick is not available anywhere right now for free. I would be shocked if it didn't pop up on like Peacock or something. I, I really think a lot of the stuff we talk about, except maybe some of my obscure ones, are, are going to pop up somewhere in October. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw, to me, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003, to me, is the one that feels the most believable out of all the uh, previous ones. And to me, I, I, I love that film. I, that's the favorite one by far. Uh, going to October 3rd, we're going with horror sequel or prequel. Uh, Brian, what was your pick for that one? Uh, I picked The Thing, the 2011 version, uh, starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Um, a lot of people don't really like this one. I think that's just because they they love the 1982 version so much, which I get it. I don't, I don't love it as much as some people, but that's great. However, I think this is also an excellent movie. It's one of those movies that's kind of kind of being a remake, but kind of, in this case, a prequel. Kind of like Desperado did with El Mariachi. And um, I know some other movies have done that too, where it's kind of remake slash, slash sequel. Um, it's kind of that kind of thing. Um, but obviously, it's got a great cast. Not only does it have um, Amelia Elizabeth Winstead in it, um, it's got a lot of other, mostly character actors that you know from stuff. Um, I just thought it was really well done, and uh, I think more people should give it a chance. Mine is definitely a guilty pleasure film. I unabashedly love this movie. I know a lot of people don't think this is a good movie, but I love the hell out of this film. I remember watching this in theaters and like cheering at how much I love this, and that's Freddy vs. Jason. Um, say what you want about the Friday the 13th franchise or Nightmare on Elm Street, um, but Watching Freddy and Jason go at it uh, is was some serious, serious fun. The cast, uh, I think, was it Jason Ritter? I think is the male, the male lead, and I'm blanking on the female lead. She's she's pretty good. Monica Kina. Yes, Monica Kina. She doesn't really do a whole lot anymore, but I actually really liked her as the lead. Um, but obviously, the showcase is Freddy versus Jason in this, and I I love the campiness. There's some there's some really badly written lines or some badly acted moments, but that's what these movies do. But when you get Freddy and Jason in the mix, and once you do eventually have the showdown, because it is Freddy versus Jason at the end for any wrestling fans that felt, it feels like a brutal wrestling match and it's great. And I 
love this film so much. I even love the soundtrack of this film. This is one of the few movies I actually got the soundtrack for because I just love the music that they added to it. Um, definitely one of my favorite sequel slash prequel films. And yeah, if you guys haven't seen Favorites, Jason, just have fun with it. Yeah, I enjoy it. It's definitely one of the better ones of the franchise. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, Especially for the Friday the 13th. And, uh, and keeping with the trend here, my pick, not available. Uh, Sean's is on HBO Max. So there you go. <laughs> we should start having a tally. <laughs> People going to be watch. an ongoing thing, I think. <laughs> I've yeah. got all mine available. <laughs> uh, next, on October 4th, we're going with a supernatural film or supernatural elements. Um, basically, that's a, a wide margin for you guys. It could be ghosts. It could be basically anything that you consider supernatural. It's kind of like a wild card pick. Um, I'm going to go with a film that I – it was one of my earlier horror movies. And I don't it's, – it's more of a horror comedy than anything else. Um, but I almost forgot about it until we started looking up movies. And I was like, I have to pick this film. And that is uh, – it's, it's Peter Jackson, right? Is it Peter Jackson or yeah. – yeah, it's Peter Jackson, uh, Frighteners, uh, with Michael J. Fox. It's got Shy McBride. It's got, um, oh, God, what's his name from House? Uh, Hugh Laurie, uh, Jake Busey. It's got a great cast in, in this movie. Um, you look confused. Hugh Laurie's not in that movie. Yeah, he is. He's, he's no, one of the ghosts. That's not Hugh Laurie, is it? I'm pretty sure it's oh. Hugh Laurie. Oh, okay. I, I literally just watched the movie and didn't realize that was him, if it is. Yeah, he's the, he's the British one with Shiny Pride. Yeah, no, it's not him. Is that him? No. I could have sworn it was Hugh Laurie. It's, uh, <laughs> Peter Dobson, it looks like. Or oh, Jim wow. Kelly, all this time, I thought it was Hugh Laurie from House. Oh, well. <laughs> it's still like, great. Wait, what? It's oh, still I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I think Jim Fife is the guy's name. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's still a great film, regardless. Basically, uh, you follow Michael J. Fox, who... He can see ghosts. Um, uh, isn't isn't a oh god Lee Lee Emery in it as well? Arlie Emery. Ar Arlie yeah. Emery. Yeah, Arlie Emery. I this this is what happens when Sean doesn't have his notes and we're just shooting it off the hips. I, I start forget, I'm sorry I have to go mental brain to think of who's in the cast. Uh, but basically he basically is is kind of doing a conning of people like you know ghosts invade the house and he goes and he scares them away and he's basically working with the ghosts and stuff. But then a real uh, situation happens and he basically has to kind of basically try to save the day. It's, it's kooky. It's funny. Um, but it also is serious as well. And I love the tone that Peter Jackson played with this. Michael J. Fox is great. Cause Michael J. Fox is usually playing, usually so used to playing like the Marty McFly and McFly and like, kind of like, Oh geez. And stuff. but he's kind of playing like this kind of like asshole kind of character, just like this kind of like better call Saul kind of type character. And it's not something you normally see Matthew Fox play, and he does it greatly in the movie. Um, what is what is your uh, pick? Uh, I picked a movie called Plus One. I've never um, heard of this. Now, if you go looking for it, look for the it's plus size, plus sign, plus one, because there is a rom com called Plus One starring Jack Quaid, I believe it is. This is not that movie. Um, this is called Plus One. There's not really any actors of note in it. The closest thing I have to someone I heard of is Logan Miller, is one of the kids in it. Um, Logan Miller from Scout's Guide and yes. and uh, Escape Room. Yeah, and there's some other people who I think look familiar, but you wouldn't know their names. Um, but the, basically, it's it's a it's a, a bunch of college kids are going to this big party at somebody's house uh, on this weekend, and there's a supernatural, some kind of supernatural weird event happens. Anyway, basically, everyone starts being essentially stalked by. They have these doppelgangers. Everybody at the party, there's now a second one of them living like ten minutes in the past, and it's slowly catching up to them, and they're trying to like kill them and take their place and stuff like that, and it's. I can't really explain a whole lot more of it without getting into the plot, but uh, it's 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 different. It's like something I hadn't seen before, and I really enjoyed it. Um, again, not anywhere free for streaming, at least as of right now. Um, Sean's is on Peacock, though. <laughs> I was you were selling me on a plus one. I was like, I actually want to check this one out. I can't watch it now, uh, at least not yet, anyway. Um, next on October fifth, we're gonna do one with a hotel. So basically, at any point in the movie, if a hotel is in the film. It qualifies for this. Um, Brian, your pick is basically my pick, but I picked the secondary pick uh, because we both love this movie so much. Yeah. Uh, Brian, what is your pick? Uh, that is Dr. Sleep. Um, this is a movie that was going to go. It could have gone like four different places on this list, but I chose to put it here. Um, it's Dr. Sleep, I think both of us agree, is superior to The Shining, honestly. I mean, I enjoy The Shining. I do. Um, Dr. Sleep, I really loved this movie. Um, and uh, 
I, I mean, the performances, I think, are a big part of it. I think uh, uh, Rebecca Ferguson as Rose the Hat, awesome in this. And actually, her whole group of the True Knots, knots. the True Knots were awesome. Um, the, the little girl in here, Kylie Curran, she did a great job. Not little girl, the younger young girl. Um, and especially Ewan McGregor, obviously. Um, but this is one that, I mean, whether or not you've seen The Shining, uh, you can still enjoy this movie. If you have seen The Shining, you'll probably get a little bit more out of it because there are some references kind of back to it. Um, but it is, it's though still its own movie. And um, this one was one that I thought I would enjoy, but I ended up loving when it came out. Yeah, my I, Doctor Sleep is, is is a fantastic film. We've we've watched that a lot. Uh, and it, and if you have a cha- if you had the option, watch the director's cut. If you have the option to watch the director's cut, I, like, I would recommend. I, I would actually recommend watch the theatrical. But if you enjoyed it as much as we did, go on and watch. If the, you're rewatching yeah. it, yes, wa- definitely watch, watch the director's. It's, it's one that's worth watching. I don't know if I'd make it your first viewing, but it's definitely worth watching the director's cut. Me, I would just I watch. It. But that's <laughs> also because I've seen the movie like five times already and no it's not available streaming anywhere <laughs> damn it i figured that would be on hbo max i, I um, bet it will be next month yeah uh mine is a uh stephen king film like a short story film uh and that is 1408 um 1408 uh, stars samuel jackson john cusack who we both you know love both those guys tony chalou mary mccormick are all in it um and it's basically about uh John Cusack's character, he, he's a man who likes basically writes horror, uh, like like horror, like haunted house books. He debunks and all this kind of stuff. And he keeps getting invited to go to this hotel and to stay at room 1408. Samuel Jackson plays kind of the owner of the, of the hotel. And after basically being talked into it, he lets Cusack stay in the room. And it's basically uh, six to eight hours of just insanity that happens to Cusack in this room. Uh, I think it's really well done. I think it's very much practical effects uh, in terms of the horror stuff. I mean, obviously, you're going to get your CGI kind of stuff in there. But I, I think psychological horror, it works really, really well for this. As you see, basically, Cusack kind of run through the gamut of everything happening to him in the movie. And Samuel Jackson plays a good supporting character in this. But this is a movie that literally is John Cusack through and through. And we can always get more John Cusack when we can. Uh, going to our October 6th, we picked uh, One with a Witch in it. And frankly, I figured this out while we were looking through this. I am not a big fan of witch movies because I, for the life of me, couldn't find any witch movies that I wanted to talk about. And no, I was not going to pick fucking Hocus Pocus. Um, but there was a movie or movies, I'm kind of cheating here, uh, that I really did actually like last year. Um, that I would recommend because it does revolve around a witch, and that is Netflix's The Fear Street Trilogy. And why I say the trilogy is because you really can't watch one of them uh, on its own because they all connectively make one big film. Um, Because if you just watch one on its own, then it's going to make literally no sense because that's how connective they are. So I would just say watch the trilogy if you can. So you're basically getting four movies uh, for this day. Um... Fear Street Trilogy, I think once you see the whole picture, it's actually a really well-done trilogy. Um, the first movie has that kind of slasher effect. The second movie is more of that camp horror. And the third movie is more of that witch kind of horror. Uh, and it, it gets better as it goes. The acting and some of the characters aren't that great by at the end of the first movie. But as you get to the second and the third film and you start to see everything kind of connect – it really does start to really kind of be like, damn, this is actually pretty good. And that's why I said watch all three instead of just picking one of them because you'll just be lost if you just pick the third film. But uh, what was your uh, witch movie? Uh, I went with Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, uh, starring Jeremy Renner and Gemma Arterton. Um, This is a movie that I, I wouldn't go so far as to call it a horror comedy, but it's definitely got a lot of comedic elements to it. It, it, it leans into the comedy. Um, basically, Hansel and Gretel have, you know, after being going through what they did as kids, they've grown up to basically um, become vigilantes and looking for retribution, trying to basically destroy, kill all the witches. Um, and then this big new, this new evil comes out they have to face, and the story goes on from there. But uh, it, it's just, this is a movie that I thought was a ton of fun. I think they found a great tone, which is kind of a balance of comedy and horror and action. Uh, Famke Jansen plays like the lead the lead witch in it um yeah and it's directed by tommy workla 
who uh who, who directed dead snow movies which i almost nominated in another category here but chose not to uh, but he also directed the movie i mentioned last week on our preview of the of fall movies he's directing violent night so yeah we'll see we'll, here's hoping that movie is as good as in our brains we have that going for yeah no, but this, but this one is just a ton of fun. It's it's one of those I, I it looked like it was just gonna be kind of a throwaway thing, but I actually really like it. I've wa- I rewatched it probably almost every year at Halloween time. Um, and this one is available on Amazon Prime Video. I have actually I, I have not seen this at the theaters, and, and I remember Paramount Plus looks like. what's that? And Paramount Plus. I remember not being a fan of it, but I remember also kind of going in with expe- expectations of a certain thing, and I, I it didn't meet it or it didn't match what I was thinking. And that maybe was why there are a few things much. in it that are that are kind of goofy. Like there's a, an obvious like CGI troll that looks a little iffy and things like that. But it's like once you get past that stuff and just enjoy the, it's one of those we just got to enjoy for the fun. So, yeah. all right, going to October seventh, we chose a movie with hillbillies. Now we mean that in terms of the the villains or the the you know horror elements being hillbillies, not just a movie with random hillbillies in it that are there for two seconds. So where hillbillies take a primary part of the film. Uh, Brian, what was your pick for the movie with hillbillies? Um, I picked Cabin in the Woods, um, which, to be specific, it's a zombie redneck torture family, which is very specific, as you'll see from the the, the betting board up there. Um, but rednecks, hillbillies, I think it qualifies. Uh, Cabin in the Woods, uh, you've probably already heard of this movie. You've probably already seen this movie. Um, but it's just, it's it's uh, written by Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard, directed by Drew Goddard. Um it stars Chris Hemsworth, among other people. Um, and it's kind of one of those meta horror movies, which in case you haven't seen it, I won't go into much detail about it. Um, but these four kids go up to a cabin uh, and, you know, that's, that's all I'm going to tell you. It's a cabin in a horror movie. Just watch it. You've probably already seen it anyway, but um, it's definitely worth checking out. Hands down, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Uh, it's funny, two of my favorite horror films of all time is, is Brian's pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and some of this was just a matter of, you know, oh, you picked that one, that's fine. It leaves me open to pick another one that I like. Yeah, exactly, so, exactly. A lot of these, I, it might be that I wanted the same one he wanted or vice versa, but you know yeah. what? We wanted to have two picks for you. Yeah, we wanted to give you guys variety. And Cabin of the Woods, if you guys have never seen Cabin of the Woods, that is a must watch. Yes. Um, My one with Hillbillies, I went with a film, I honestly can't even remember if I really liked it, but I remember it made me uneasy while watching it. Me and my best friend, uh, we both watched this and we both, there's, it, there's an iconic scene that everyone knows what the scene is. Cause it's my mind's a remake. And it was just, it made us feel so uncomfortable that he had to stop watching it. And I kept watching it. And I can't remember if I loved it or not, but it was enough for me to remember I, this movie and immediately go this after Brian took cabin in the woods. And that is the Hills have eyes remake uh, 2006 um it's got aaron uh stanford people will know from x-men last stand uh you also got uh, vanessa shaw ted levine uh emily um emily de raven from lost i just remember the trailer scene um that's all i'm gonna say and i just remember my my best friend was like dude i gotta stop watching this like i'm just i'm not like this this is making me uncomfortable like I, i'm not enjoying this film which I've never, I've never seen him do that. He's never done that before. He's always been like, yeah, gore, push it, push it, push it. And for some reason, that scene was like, nope, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Uh, but that movie, I think, was uh, one of the better kind of remakes, in my opinion, from what I remember. I remember going, it, it left a lasting impression on me of something that was unsettling and uncomfortable. Um I, I remember watching the remake or not the original and I wasn't super into it, but the remake I was more into. So that's going to be my pick for that one um, on October 8th. Or, or is that one on anything? I don't know if it is. No, I know specifically it's not because I went to try and find it to watch it and I have to get it from my library instead. So currently nowhere. <laughs> from the library. Uh, next on October 8th, we chose one with a number in the title and that does not count the sequel. So no scream two or Friday the 13th 2, but Friday the 13th would qualify. But it has to have a number in the actual title, not counting the sequel. So I went with, in my opinion, still to this day, the best Halloween film, Halloween H2O. Uh, to the sequel, but it's not number 20, so it's a loophole. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's the first time they uh, retconned the Halloween franchise. Uh, not basically, the last. <laughs> yeah, not the last. Um, and uh, you know, he's got Jamie Lee Curtis back. I think it's the first time she was back since uh, the second, the actual second movie. Uh, you got Josh Hartnett. You got I think Michelle Williams is in it as well. Um, also, I think LL Cool J, if I'm not mistaken, is in it. Uh, basically, um, there she's basically like a like she runs like a private kind of like I don't know if it's a school or like someplace. I, I haven't seen it in a while. Anyway, it's a Halloween movie. It's Halloween. Michael comes after her and, and her, you know, her son, and they they battle her or battle him. Um, but to me, I was it was the one I enjoyed the most. There's there's another big name in this. Adam Martin, playing. Michelle Williams, uh, Jody Lee. Oh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph Gordon Levitt. That was like, like there's another big name that I'm leaving out of this. But yeah, Joseph Gordon Levitt, Adam Arkin also in the movie. So. Really, uh, and us, I also, I also like Jody, Jody Leno Keith as well. So, really good cast all the way through. And it's probably my favorite Halloween movie because uh, we all know how Brian and I both felt about Halloween kills. Um, and the last, the, yeah, we were not fans of that. Um, and we both talked about Halloween Ends, um, which is coming out here relatively soon, you know, on last week's episode of the fall preview. But uh, that's my pick Halloween H2O. Uh, which I would think is on Peacock because Halloween Kills and Ends are both going to debut on Peacock. It's not currently. Yeah. It's currently on Paramount Plus and on Hoopla. It's weird. I, I would think they'd put all the Halloweens on Peacock. I'm surprised um, some producing contracts or something. Or maybe in October it will be. Maybe. You know. What was your pick? Um, I uh, Josh Hartnett's having a good a good day with us. Um, <laughs> this is Josh Hartnett day. <laughs> Josh Hartnett Day. Uh, my my pick is Thirty Days of Night. Uh, this is a uh, vampire film set in Alaska, uh, hence the title Thirty Days of Night. Um, it's based on a graphic novel. Um, it is directed by David Slade, who um, he's done a few other things. Oh well, he did a one of the Twilight movies, but um, <laughs> we'll forgive him for that. Um, but this is a movie. It's it's one of those movies. It's like it's not it's not romantic. It's not Gothic vampires. It's not, you know, the Bela Lugosi. It's not, you know, like Gary Oldman's Dracula. It's, this is just vampires, just vicious and dirty and fierce, kind of like a more of like a near dark kind of thing mm -hmm. um, where it's not pretty. This is just, they're just like almost, they're, they're literally just creatures that are going to rip your, rip your throats out. Um, but this is a movie that I thought it was a, a great, uh, well, I'd say original concept, original for the graphic novel, of course, but they made it into a movie. Um, because I mean, if they can only come out at night and now you're in Alaska where night's going to last essentially for 30 days, uh, it just makes for a, a unique setting for a vampire film. And I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, and that one is currently on Pluto TV Pluto. website or app. So it's free with ads basically. <sighs> I remember Pluto. I can't remember what, I think it was, I think it was when we were doing weekend crusaders. We were watching the heist and I had to watch it on Pluto TV. They had the most obnoxious, annoying ads. And they happened like every seven minutes. It was. It the is. I think, th and I think they're one of the ones also who will play like the same ads every ad. Yeah, right. it was the same ad over and over. I think <laughs> it was like the Kevin Hart like XM Radio was going. What? Oh, oh god, it was so bad. Um, but that's not against the movie. That's against the app. <laughs> but nonetheless, we're gonna go to October 9th, which is a foreign horror film. We mean by foreign, we don't mean that it's an American film based in another, you know, like England or whatever. This is an actual movie. That's a non-U.S. film that we're picking. Um, Brian, what was your pick? For oh, yeah. Mine is a non-U.S. film. It is not a foreign language film, but it is a foreign film. Because this one comes out of Australia, I think, or New Zealand. Damn it. That still counts. One of the, No, I know. I'm just, I can never – I know, don't know which one it is, honestly. Um, I want to say it's New Zealand. Um, but it's uh, basically Deathgasm. It's a 2015 film. Um, the director, the only other thing he's done is Guns Akimbo, which you know how me and Sean both feel about these movies, yeah. about that movie. Um, great movie. It's kind of got that same kind of very, very kinetic, very comedic style to it. Um, again, no, no people you've ever heard are in this movie. Uh, it's, uh, the log line says two teenage boys unwittingly summon an ancient evil entity known as the blind one by delving into black magic while trying to escape their mundane lives. Um, uh, basically there are these two people that want to be heavy metal musicians. And so they accidentally summon the actual devil or demons so basically and, it's an hd in the pick of destiny but a horror film basically basically it's a, it's a horror <laughs> film and of course you know wackiness ensues and but this is one if, if you like like uh, guns akimbo or if you like the taika waititi movies that kind of that kind of 
Australian New Zealand comedy sensibility, I think you'll really enjoy this one as well. And this one is actually free all over the place from Vudu, Tubi TV, Roku Channel. It's on Peacock as well, Pluto. So that's definitely one that we can watch. Yeah. Uh, mine, call me a basic bitch, but I don't care. <laughs> basic bitch, me, right? This is still hands down one of the best uh, foreign horror films I've ever seen. It's the best fucking zombie movie I've ever seen. I know I'm about to start a trend because we're going into zombie world at this point for the next couple of days. But I'm picking Train to Busan. Uh, Train to Busan still to this day is is the best zombie film I've seen. It is flipping amazing. I I was so reluctant to watch this film because it was a foreign film. Because it's like, oh, I don't want to read the subtitles. And that's every, everyone gives that same response. I don't want to read subtitles. But I was like, why should I care? I have subtitles on. 90% of the time when I'm watching a movie anyway. So why should I worry about that? So I w- popped it on because it's on Netflix still, I believe. Um, it was when I watched it. Um, it is not, but it's everywhere Is else. It? Amazon Prime, Peacock, Shutter, Pluto, Crackle, Hoopla, Canopy, Tubi. It's it was everywhere. on Netflix for like years. Well, it's but anyway, <laughs> it's about, it's simply the title. It's a train to Busan and a zombie outbreak has just started. Craziness ensues. In terms of the cast, probably the only person in the cast that anyone American who doesn't watch foreign movies would know is Ma. I'm gonna say the name wrong. Ma Ma Dong Suik or Siuk Siuk. I thought you were gonna say Ma Dong Suk, but okay. no, but he's in the Eternals, um, which I know Brian. I don't like the Eternals, but he is great in this movie. Um, the cast and and the great thing about this, besides that, the zombies are flipping awesome is that they do such a great job making you care about these characters so when they do when do some of them do inevitably die you're like no not that one or no it also has probably one of the most hated characters in a zombie film that i that i can remember there's one character that you just like i hope this person gets (laughs) brutal viciously eaten alive death possible uh if you guys have never seen traded busan you must go see this movie or go watch this movie because it is like i said the best zombie movie i've ever seen um but i said sticking on the zombie train uh the next two days is gonna be zombie movies so we're gonna go to the 10th which is pick your you pick your uh, movie with a slow zombie as as the main thing um and i'm gonna once again basic bitch me i don't care uh i'm going shawn of the dead because why the fuck would I not pick Shaun of the Dead? It's either, but to me, when you have when you have the 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 uh, slow zombies, you've got Night of the Living Dead, you got Shaun of the Dead. I'd rather laugh and have fun than watch the old school Night of the Living Dead. They're coming. Well, I laugh at Night of the Living Dead, but that's for the wrong reasons. Yeah, the wrong reasons. So I'm gonna pick Shaun of the Dead because it's it's fucking Shaun of the Dead. Um, do I need I to? Say I wish Shaun was dead. So, yeah. What, yeah, what? I don't need to say anything more than that. Shaun of the Dead. Uh, what was your pick? Um, I went with a movie called One Cut of the Dead. Uh, this is a film from, I want to say, Japan? I know it's not Korean. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I believe it's Japan. Um, I This is a movie, and everyone, if you ask anyone who's seen this movie, they'll tell you the same thing. Go into this movie knowing nothing about it. If you read anything about it, you could ruin some major revelations to you. Um, it's just it's it's an original movie. It's basically the, the it's, movie is about some people filming a zombie movie and then real zombies show up. Um, that's all I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, just know that it is unique about the half hour mark. It takes a turn that just completely makes you rethink everything you've watched so far and everything you're going to watch. Um, it's just one of those movies that I'm not going to claim it's the best zombie movie ever made, but it is it's a very good zombie movie as it is. But it's also just another one that's very original and, and has kind of its own it put its own spin on it that I thought was very interesting. Um, unfortunately not free anywhere unless, well, that's on AMC and shutter AMC plus and shutter. So if you have either of those services, check it out. If not, I mean, shutter, shutter always does like free membership for like however long. Yeah. So people get your month for, sh- for shutter for October. Why not? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> if it's just um, a week then just make a list and watch them all in a week. Exactly. Uh, the 11th, we're going to go with our favorite fast zombie film, which to me would be Train to Busan, but I'd put that in the horror category. Um, but for me, I'm going to pick a movie that I still think not enough people have seen or have taken notice of, 
and that is the 2018, yeah, 2018 World War II horror film Overlord. Uh, Overlord is basically what I said. It it World War II, a bunch of um, basically you uh, like American army guys. They they get shot down from their plane. They land in enemy territory or Nazi territory, and they basically stumble upon this this crazy like scientific lab of basically mad fucking zombies and it is insanely crazy and awesome and cool and even even taking the zombies out of the equation but even though they're a very vital part of it the opening scene where this plane gets shot down is terrifying the and first half hour of this movie is essentially just a straight straight war movie it is and like and a very good one at that it it's a, it's a, it doesn't take a turn it's like a half hour in then it's a whole different movie but then yeah yeah, it's it's like I said, the, the the opening scene with the plane getting shot down is shot so horrifically. You're like, I feel like I'm being shot down from a plane. It is a terrifying experience. And then you that's like just the tip of the iceberg of what's to come in terms of cast. Uh, maybe we'll know what, you know, Wyatt Russell, uh, Kurt Russell's son or now U.S. agent from the MCU. And uh, I, oh, God, as a what's his name? Pi, Pilu. Pilu Asbeck. Asbeck. Isn't he from Game of Thrones? Yes. Yeah, Game of Thrones. Um, he was also just in what was it? Oh, Samaritan. Never mind. <laughs> yes, he was in Samaritan. Uh, and then I personally really enjoyed uh, was it Mathil- Mathilde Olivier? She plays um, kind of Matilda like, Olivier. Yeah. It's Matilda. Yeah, it's just it's 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 just the way, they, the way they spelled it. Yeah. Uh, I think she's fantastic in the film. But definitely check out Overlord. It is a movie that not enough people have seen that really should see it. Um, is Overlord on anything? Uh, Overlord is currently on uh, FX now and Paramount Plus. Yeah. And what is your pick for Fast Zombies? Uh, for Fast Zombies, I got you covered on your Train to Busan pick because I picked Train to Busan's sequel, Train to Busan. I think it's called Train to Busan Presents Peninsula. It's yeah. essentially a sequel. None of the same characters or anything, though. It's basically just in the same world where zombies. It's have... kind of like Ten Cloverfield Lane is to Cloverfield. It's this Train to Busan world, but it's a... yeah. It takes place in the same world where zombies have taken over, but it's completely different characters, completely different location, things like that. Um, this is a movie. I, it is not as good as Train to Busan. I will say that up front. Um, it is also a very different movie than Train to Busan. I, I think I described this when I reviewed it as at times this movie feels like Train to Busan meets Fast and the Furious. It's a hundred percent that. Which sounds weird as hell, but it kind of works. It's, it's, it's kinda... to me. To me, it's it's Fast and the Furious and Mad Max Fury Road with Train <laughs> to Busan wrapped around it. A little bit of World War Z in the middle of it too. Exactly, and it all were it works. It does. You told me work. if you said okay, the next Fast and the Furious movie is going to be them during a zombie outbreak i'm like i am sold and this is basically that movie but they didn't get the cast fast and the furious in it but not army um, of the dead <laughs> <laughs> now granted now that was fast and the furious stuff this is mostly it's like the last half hour hour of the movie yeah. uh the rest of it is more uh it's it's kind of in this zombie world where kind of like, like the walking like dead where these people have kind of created yeah. their own camps and their own societies and, yeah. and nobody trusts anybody anything like that but if you enjoyed train to busan i would definitely say give this one a shot no going in it's not as good but it is still very enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Like I said, but it's like I said, it's one of those like Train to Busan's like on this pedestal. No, I'm like, not knocking. I'm just saying, don't expect Train to Busan again. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but I mean, it's still really fun. Yeah. Um. Next on October 12th, you're going to pick one with a killer animal, and no, I refrained myself from picking Jaws on this. But Brian, what was your pick for one with a killer animal? You ended your basic bitch streak. I did. Um, okay. Uh, I picked. Don't Lake worry, Brian. it'll come back around. <laughs> I, I picked Lake Placid because I, I hope he eats your friends. Um, yeah, uh, obviously Betty, Betty White. White is so great. Betty movie. White is great this movie, and this is like I think the first time she really popped up. If, this, is when, this is when this is when Betty White became Betty White that we all yeah, love. This, this became like the new Betty White resurgence came out. Um, but the rest of the cast, I mean, Bill Pullman, I love Bridget Fonda, I like Brendan Gleeson's and Oliver Platt, who we both love in pretty much everything he, is he does. So good in this movie, yeah, Oliver Platt, even in bad movies, he's always good. That's 100% um, true. But this is one of those movies where he's just having a ton of fun with it, with his character, too. Um, but this one, uh, basically, the giant alligator movie. That's yeah. all you need to know about this. Um, again, I think this one uh, struck a good balance between, like, the horror and the comedy to it. It's not a comedy by any means, but it's definitely got a lot of funny stuff in there. Um, this one is definitely worth checking out. Um, only on AMC Plus right now. And I chose Piranha 2. No, never. 
<laughs> me, I also went with an app. No, the with Piranha that. 3D movies. I would recommend those. Piranha 3D I mean. double D. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also picked a uh, basically a, an alligator crocodile. I, I never know which one's which. But I also picked an alligator. I'm going to call them alligators. I don't care. Uh, I also picked an alligator film, and that is Crawl. Uh, this was another film. It was 2019, also directed by Alexander Aja, who did The Hills Have Eyes. Um, this movie was just really, really well done. I almost wanted to go with The Shallows, but I really like Crawl. Um, what were you going to say? Uh, no, I was just, you mentioned the director, so I looked him up real quick. He's done a ton of good movies. Crawl, Hills Have Eyes, Horns with Jana Radcliffe, another great movie. Um, he did Piranha, the uh, the first remake. Uh, High Tension and Mirrors, which had Kiefer Sutherland in it. Yeah, I remember that Horror one. movies. Yeah. Oh, sorry. yeah. Um, but yeah, Crawl is basically about this, This like, uh, it follows, I'm going to say her last name wrong, Kaya Scudar- Scudalario. 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 Um, and basically, there's a hurricane hitting her, t- hitting her small town of Florida. And she's trying to get home to where her father is to make sure because he's not picking up his phone. She's trying to make sure he gets out. And her father's Barry Pepper, who I love and everything he's in. Um, and as she's there, uh, basically the waters flood in. But by doing that, the alligators um, basically get whooshed into the neighborhood. And it basically becomes the alligators have basically s- swam into her house. And it becomes like almost like a home invasion, technically, of these alligators coming after her and and her father who's trapped in the house and it's it's insane it's beautifully well shot it's got that suffocating feeling because they're surrounded by water they're in their house but they can't see anything and the alligators can see everything because they can swim underwater it is it is an incredibly well done film and it doesn't have the comedic elements like like Fawcett does but it definitely was a really well done horror-esque type film um, also apparently features Gladriel herself. Morphid Clark is somewhere in this movie. She must be oh, uh, a friend. The daughter. I, I don't. I think. I think her. She's mostly just like on the phone, though. Uh, okay. I think. I think she plays mostly just a voice talking to her. The sister going, "I am gonna hold a dad," and all this kind of <laughs> crap. She might be in like pictures, but I don't really recall her in the actual film. But yes, Galadriel from Rings of Power is technically in the movie. <laughs> um, next, we are going to go to October thirteenth, and. Uh, not, my picks. I, I should have. I should have swapped our picks <laughs> because of the day. Uh, screw it. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. We're gonna swap. We're gonna swap the thirteenth and the fourteenth around. October thirteenth. We're gonna go one with a camp slash cabin. Um, what did John pick for this day? Yeah, uh, my pick is Friday the thirteenth, but not the Friday the thirteenth y'all keep thinking I'm picking. I'm picking the two thousand nine remake because it's the best one. It and is still I the best am, one is in agreement with me. Uh, we talked about this on the Week of Crusaders. Great cast. You got Jared Padalecki. To me, the most terrifying Jason out of all the other films. Um, the rest of the cast, uh, I, I'm not going to search for him because it's going to take me too long to pull him up. Da- Daniel Panabaker is in it. Uh, I like that this Jason seems actually intelligent to a fault. He's got like, it, just like the way he gets around doesn't, Add the supernatural elements like the old Fred 13. It actually is logical and makes sense. And the brutality of the kills are really great. And I really just like the cast that they chose for this film. Um, hands down, and I hate that people just unabashedly attacked this film. I was like, this is a really good film. This is not a nightmare on Elm Street 2010. This is actually a really good remake. And it never they never made another one after this. And I really wanted to see more from these guys doing this one. But uh, definitely Friday 13th, 2009 is a must watch for me. And Brian is now picking my other favorite horror film for his pick. <laughs> uh, Friday 13th, by the way, available on HBO Max. I chose uh, the movie The Final Girls, which is another, which is one that I think far too few people in this community uh, have watched. Um, this horror is a movie, movie that never got a theatrical release as far as I'm aware. Um, which is probably why a lot of people haven't seen it. Um, it isn't available for free to watch anywhere right now, but it's worth your three bucks to go rent it on Voodoo or whatever it is. Um, it's worth buying. It's worth just buy it. Yeah, yeah. no, this is a movie. Uh, it stars uh, Taisa, Taisa Farmiga. Um, it is from the director of such hits as Isn't It Romantic and the Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas, but I won't hold that against him. Um, <laughs> Nina Dobrev is in it. Alexander Ludwig is in it. Adam Devine. Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley is in it. 
Alia Shawkat, isn't it? Um, this is a movie. It's essentially yeah, Malin Ackerman. <laughs> Mal, did, I, did I not list her? Oh, yeah, Malin Ackerman. She's kind of the main star of the show. He's the main crux of or one of them. Yeah. Uh, basically, there's there's some kids in, in modern day. Uh, one of them, her mother was was you know uh, used to be like a horror uh, final girl, essentially uh, actress. Um, they go off to. No, they go to see a movie, and they get transported basically back into this movie, the, the world of this movie that her mom used to star in. Don't want to say a whole lot more than that. Um, it is definitely, uh, it, it's original, it's got horror, it's got comedy, it's got a great cast to it. I wish I could say more without ruining things of it. Um, I will say that the star of the movie is Angela Trimber, who plays Tina. You will learn to love Tina. I won't say she's a star, but she's definitely she's definitely a highlight. The most in the fun, film. yes. There's one particular moment in the movie where it, she's she's given it a thousand percent. She is <laughs> she knows her role, and she's going to give it a hundred percent dedication. Yes. Um. Yeah. I I love this film. It's incredibly meta, which I love meta horror when it's done correctly, like this in Cabin in the Woods. Um, the cast is great from top to bottom. Everyone is great in this. It's shot beautifully. There's the third act shots in the third act. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to say because I don't want to get mm -hmm. is gorgeous on 4K. Um, it's funny as hell and has some incredible heart in this movie, too. That actually made Surprisingly me. Surprisingly, does. It does. Yeah. Watching it. it is hands down one of my favorite horror films. It's one of the few horror films that I've actually given a perfect five star rating for. I love this movie so much and you guys have need to see this film like i said if it's worth if it's five dollars to buy fucking buy it you will not be disappointed um now we're doing horror remake slash reboot hey and you want to guess what my pick is for that it says brian says brian already gave his pick let's go ahead and go with it uh it is evil dead uh this is the 2013 uh rebootish thing uh yeah. directed by fiddy alvarez starring jane levy um this is one of those movies that I, I I like the original Evil Dead. I mean, I think the the first one obviously was a super low budget affair. Evil Dead Two kind of pioneered the whole remake slash sequel. Which one is it kind of thing? Um, added a lot more comedy to it. Uh, obviously, by the time you got to Army of Darkness, it's basically a full on comedy that just happens to have a horror background to it. Um, this one it, it really gets back to just the straight horror roots of it, and it yeah. is bloody. It is gruesome. Um, it is it is everything you want it to be because it is it is a horror movie and a bloody one in its in its truest sense. Um, I thought Jane Levy did a great job. I think that a lot of the the effects, especially the practical stuff, but even the oh, digital yeah. stuff, I think are really well done. I think it's it manages to be scary. It manages to add something to the franchise while still it's not one of those ones that's kind of like you know discards everything that came before it. Um, I think it still kind of pays tribute to it. Um, it's very good. And this one is available currently on Paramount Plus and Pluto TV. And all I can say is there's one particular scene that still like makes me cringe. And it's, I'm just going to say it's the tongue scene. And that's all <laughs> I'm going to say about that. That scene is just like, oh, oh. but the Evil Dead is is so great. It's so great. Um, and also, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. If you guys have never seen that, Ash vs. the Evil Dead is fantastic. Um, everything Evil Dead is great, but that, that series was fantastic. But this remake was was great. Uh, mine, I'm going to go with, pro once again, back to basic bitch status at this point. Uh, I'm going to go with the one that everyone goes nuts over. I think I love it less now than I did back in the day because we watched this for Weekend Crusade. I will agree with that. Um, but that is Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Um, when it first came out, everyone lost their minds. Like This literally is what set Zack Snyder down the path of where he is today. Uh, that and then 300 followed up with that. Um, but cast wise, you got Sarah Polly, Ving Rames, Ty Burnell, um, Jake, uh, Jake, uh, Weber. Uh, it's brutal. Um, it was one of the, I think it wasn't one of the very first fast zombie horrors. Was, didn't this kind of start the fast zombie? It was one of them. Yeah. 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 It was like this and 28 days later were kind of the yeah, ones. That like, really that's where they start. That's, that's when the fast zombies like, Oh shit, they're fast. You know, and it, it kind of just turned the zombie franchises kind of on their head and kind of became this this new genre, which is why we separated from slow to fast. Um, it, it, it is definitely of its time. 
Uh, I don't think it works nearly as well now in 2022 than it does in 2004, but it definitely still works really well and still also leads to one of my funniest moments in uh, my favorite comedy of all time, 40 year old virgin when they're actually, when he's watching it in the store and he loses his mind <laughs> watching the movie. I will never get down of the dead out of my brain because of that film. But uh, it is, it is definitely a movie that exceeds in my opinion, the original. Um, and for anyone who's never seen Ty Burnell ever be anything but the dad from modern family, and you want to see him as an asshole, here's your movie. Uh, Cause I don't think he's ever played a, anything but like a good guy. <laughs> and in this movie, he's not. Um, but yeah, Dawn of the Dead from Zack Snyder. Uh, going to October 15th. We're halfway there almost. Uh, we're going to go with one with a killer child. Um, I had a hard time picking this one. So I kind of went basic with this. And mm -hmm. honestly, I did not know that this character, I forgot that this character was a child. I thought she was a teenager, but when I found out she was a child, I was like, I'm just going to take this. And that's the ring. The ring was a badass horror film when it came out. I think it still is prevalent today more than it was back then. I think it was really well done. I think Naomi Watts kills it. I think, uh, Oh God, I'm blanking on the guy's name. Oh, Martin God. Henderson. Yes, uh, Henderson, you're from your movie Torque. From Torque. From Torque. <laughs> I think he's really good in it. I think the horror elements all work really well. Most people have seen The Ring, obviously, but if you haven't seen it in a long time, maybe you should go back and check it out. So that was my pick. Um, that's that's well, me. I haven't seen this in, in a long time. I have to check this out. It's been a long out. time. Uh, it I is did on see, Paramount. I did not Plus see and Rings. Rings. I did not see the, the new one. I heard it was really, really bad. But uh, definitely check out the ring for my pick. And what was your pick for this? Um, I don't give you. I don't give you a one killer kid in this. I gave you a whole bunch of them. And my pick is Cooties from 2014. Uh, Elijah Wood, for those of you who don't know, um, kind of after Lord of the Rings, he still makes. He still acts in movies, but he also is a big time. He loves to produce horror movies. And and what's even better is he loves to produce horror movies that he just thinks are fucking cool. He doesn't care if they're financial yeah. hits. He's the one producing the Toxic Avenger reboot starring P Peter Dinklage. So that'll be cool. Um, he did one called Maniac, which is cool. Um, but this is one called Cooties. He also, he also did a piano, like phone booth piano. Yeah, but, um, yes, the, uh, the grand, 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 piano, grand, grand piano. Grand piano. Yeah. Um, so he, he's, he's become a big horror producer in, in terms of just making a lot of, you know, good decent fun genre movies um this one he actually does star in along with rain wilson allison pill jack mcbrayer nasim pedrad lee Wanell, um jorge garcia who is hurley from lost um this is essentially uh these tainted chicken nuggets uh get delivered to a school at elementary school and the kids are all turning into zombies i'd be so fucked because i eat chicken nuggets <laughs> all the time <laughs> so so uh, basically, just that that that's that's all I need to know about this. It's, yeah. it's elementary school. The kids are all turned into zombies, and the teachers are all trying to fight them off, and they're killing them and shit. And so, if you it's, love watching the comedy, if, if if you enjoy watching adults beat the shit out of kids and not enjoy watching kids about it. get murdered, yeah. this is the movie for you. <laughs> um, but no, this this one is just it, it's just one of those ones. It's just a really original idea, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, this one is available on Peacock right now. Going to October 16th, we're going to go with one with an exorcism slash possession. Uh, Brian, I remember us talking about your pick on the Weekend Crusaders. Um, what was your pick again? I'm trying to hold back a sneeze right now. Uh, my pick is Idle Hands. Um, this is basically, uh, if you took uh, Evil Dead 2 and put it in a modern teen comedy, you get Idle Hands. A stoner uh, comedy. A stoner comedy, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Devin Sawa. Um, stars as basically this slacker stoner kid um, who basically his hand gets possessed by a demon and it's trying to kill people. And uh, even, even uh, I don't want to give too much of this movie away. Um, his best friends played by Seth Green and Eldon Henson, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They are hilarious in this movie. I love those two in it. You have the gorgeous Jessica Alba in one of her earlier roles. Um I mean, Vivica A. Fox is in there as, as I think uh, the, a, uh, yeah. the she, demon she, hunter. She's hunting, she's hunting them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this, this is just, it, it's a fun movie. It's very nineties. Uh, the soundtrack is very, very nineties. I think, I think um, offspring, the offspring even shows up in the, they do. As the band playing at the prom. Um, so if you like that kind of movie, I love the soundtrack myself. So if you're into that kind of music, you'll enjoy the soundtrack as well. 
Uh, but this one's a ton of fun. And Devasawa putting on some of the best hand work. He does a great job of it. You actually he feel does like such a good job. He hand. does such a good job with his hand movements in that movie. Um, and that one is currently uh, Pluto TV's only place right now. Mm. Mine is going to be a movie that Brian just straight up hates because he always hates A24. But this was one of my I favorite. I'll get through films. this whole show with no A24, but no. Uh, this one, it's the only, I think it's the only A24 movie, so calm down. Um, actually, scratch that. No, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, Hereditary, obviously. It was one of my favorite films of 2018. Um, psychological, you know, family film with horror elements. And that's, I think, why Brian doesn't necessarily like it as much, because the horror elements really don't start to show up until about three-fourths of the way through. It's more about, you know, guilt and loss and stuff like that. It's a huge family drama. Tony Collette should have been nominated for an Oscar for this performance. I will agree. Tony Collette had a great performance. In this um, movie. Alex Wolf is great. Millie Sharpo and Dowd, Gabriel Brin. Everyone is a phenomenalist. It's shot beautifully. Uh, it's an incredible film that just was too boring for Brian to like, but I think this movie's fantastic. And even on a rewatch, it's even better because then you start to notice little, little Easter eggs and stuff that guide you through the film. I'm not going to go too much further into it because I know how It makes Brian a great unintentional it. comedy. I laughed through most of this movie, honestly. That is what ruined it for me in theaters because people couldn't understand what they were watching and just wanted to make jokes and laugh through the entire Oh, I part. understood it. I just didn't enjoy it. But I'm, I'm not, not saying, saying you did. Sean's I'm not saying pick. you. This is Sean's pick. If you like A24 movies, go check this out. I, I, I Like I said, I will agree. Tony Gillette is great in it. Uh, you must be excited for Ari, Ari Aster's new film because he's doing a comedy. Uh, it is on Canopy, <laughs> and if you have Showtime, it's on there right now. Going to October 17th, we're doing one based on a holiday other than Halloween, and we both picked the same holiday. Uh, I'm going with a classic because it's just great. And, and in fact, one of the characters is here, right there, right up, right there. There's something about Mary? Hello, oh. Gizmo. I'm doing <laughs> Gremlins. Uh, Gremlins I remember watching this when I was a kid. Uh, I loved Gizmo and all the gremlins. Um, still, hands down, probably one of the best horror movie monologues. And was it Phoebe Cates? Mm -hmm. the, the, her, the father story about Santa. Like, that still is one of the better, like, mo horror movie monologues to this day. Uh, is it campy and comedic? Sure. But Gremlins 1 is more on the horror elements where... Gremlins 2, the new batch, went full-on comedy with it, kind of like how Evil Dead did. Um, but yeah, Gremlins is a must and it, for anyone who's never seen it. It's it beautifully well done with the puppeteering and um, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that was... Yeah, that, cool. that is, it's, it's, it's a classic. I would call it, uh, when I, especially for me growing up as a kid, that was totally gateway horror for me. That was a movie that like, you know, as a kid, I'm not into horror, but I watched that movie, I'm like, ooh, I like this. I like being scared. And that kind of paved the way for future stuff. Um, and I will agree about the the actual physical animatronic or puppets or whatever they were using. They all kinds of different styles is, is so well done in this movie um, to the point where they were going to do a, apparently an upcoming possible sequel. Uh, they were talking about doing CGI and there's this big uproar about it. It's like, OK, fine. We won't do CGI. We'll do no. it practical. I'm like, yes, victory. Yeah. Don't you dare CGI the Gremlins. And that is on HBO Max. And your pick was also um, a Weekend Crusaders movie. Also, we can see this movie. Also, Christmas. Uh, mine is Krampus from 2015 from director Michael Doherty, who you will hear from again later in the show. Um, this is, uh, uh, th there's the ancient legend about uh, basically there's Santa Claus and there's kind of an evil spirit who also is at Christmas uh, who basically punishes the naughty kids. Um, so it basically kind of takes a spin on that, on that legend. Uh, it is a horror comedy. It stars Adam Scott, Tony Collette again, uh, uh, Dave Keckner is in it. Uh, and mostly a lot of other people you haven't heard of. Um, but this is the one. It, I don't know what I can say about this movie. Um, I, I really, I will say, I really love this. What, what more do you have to say? Yeah, it's Krampus. I love the design of the creature. Yes. I love, I love uh, some of the other things that he manages to possess to help him along, which are mm -hmm. also very fun, which I won't go into that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, check this one out. Um, although it is not free anywhere right now. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, like, you, you feel like, am I watching Christmas Vacation with a dysfunctional family, and then shit Yes, it, it, it does feel like Christmas Vacation, yes. Yeah, yeah, shit hits the fan, and then you're just, like, laughing slash just, like, in awe of, of the craziness, and, and, and that's Krampus for you. 
Um, going to October 18th, we chose a horror comedy, which technically both those films were would have fit in this category, but we chose two. Obviously, other. half my list is horror comedy. Yeah. Let's be honest. That's here. very true. <laughs> uh, what I, I I cannot remember what your movie is. So I want you to go first. What is your horror comedy? Um, I picked a movie called Detention. Uh, Detention is a movie. Um, it's very difficult to describe because it is it, it's from the director of Torque, uh, Joseph Kahn. Uh, he directed this. He also directed Bodied. I don't know if anybody saw that movie about the world of battle rap. Um, but this is a movie. It's 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 a high school. It's a teen comedy love story, time travel, sci-fi, horror. It, it's fifty different things. Um, I think I, I described it in my original review as it wants to be an '80s John Hughes movie with like '90s Kevin Williamson uh, dialogue uh, told in a style of. 2000s Edgar Wright. Uh, it this movie is weird. That's it's a beautiful it, combination you just described. It, and it really it, it's the movie. I literally as many many times in this movie said out loud like what the fuck am I watching? So it just took so many different directions. You're like I don't know where this is going. I don't understand what's going on, but I'm just enjoying it. And by so the end, R -R -R? The, it kind of. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite. It's over the top. It's more just like it's just going in so many weird directions. But uh, it it's a ton of fun, and it's it's weird. I'll give it that. Um, not everybody's going to enjoy it. But uh, it's at times you think you're just watching a straight like you know, teen high school comedy, and then all of a sudden the horror aspect will jump in, or all of a sudden there's like time travel involved, and it's just it's a movie made with like a blender mentality, which kind of threw everything in, and just somehow it worked. Um, but this one, like I said, not a lot of people have seen this movie. It stars uh, Josh Hutcherson. It's like the main kid in it. Um, Dane Cook is the principal. Um, you have me so lot, just by that logic right there. Yeah. Dangerous otherwise, a lot, and his character actually has a fun backstory to him. Um, but I can't really tell anything more about it without uh, without totally ruining it. The horror part of it has to do with a killer named Cinderella, who apparently stars in these movies within the movie, but then she actually exists apparently, and there's a whole big thing about that. Um, and this one you can currently watch on Tubi TV, free with ads. So. I'm 100% watching this just for Dane Cook as principal. You, that you, right you need there. to check out this movie. This movie is actually a ton of fun, and more people need to watch this. That movie. right there is my selling point right there. Uh, me, back to basic bitch. I'm going Zombieland. <laughs> um, it's just, it's funny. I love Zombieland. Oh, I, I do too. I just love yeah, watching the basic bitch. I, I just, uh, well, it's because everyone's like, you think you're going to try to be unique. It's like, here I am picking like the move, the horror, the one horror movie from that year that everyone loved. Um, yeah, I mean, it's zombie land. Is there anything else I need to say? I mean, Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, who is hot as shit in this movie. And I don't know if it's because of the mascara or what, but this is like her, to me, is her peak hottest. Probably the attitude, too. Yeah, it is probably the attitude, too. And then you got Abigail Breslin, she's there. Actually, no, she's yeah. actually fine in this. It's the sequel, and I couldn't stand her. The sequel, which I would actually also recommend the sequel. I enjoy the sequel a lot. Plus, yeah, that's because it's Zoe Deutsch, yeah. But Abigail Breslin's storyline could just go. Yeah, that's the worst part of the sequel. But the first one is a lot of fun. I love the dynamic between the four, the zombie kills of the week, all this kind of stuff. I, I love the world that they created with zombie. In land. the first 10 minutes yeah. of that movie, they created such a unique world. You're like, okay, I'm in. I'm, yes. I know where And just like the way the opening credits were. Like, that's the first thing that we said. It's like yes. when Army of the Dead came out last year, it was like, oh, they did a zombie land intro, which was the best part of the movie for Army of the Dead for Brian. And I partially to agree with that. So they did a zombie land intro. Plus the cameo in the middle of the film is still one of the better uh, movie cameos. Uh, I love it. Um, but yeah, you guys, if you guys have all seen something, then you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Never anyway, seen uh, October 19th, we said go with one that has aliens or space in it. Um, and as much as I really wanted to go with one particular film, I didn't consider it a horror, which was Signs. Uh, I don't consider that a horror. Uh, so I went with a another uh film that much like detention was kind or even idle hands is a very much of its time kind of mtv kind of horror film and that is the faculty uh the faculty another weekend crusaders movie who knows a lot of these are weekend crusaders films <laughs> um i didn't notice that while we were doing this uh the faculty is an awesome uh alien well, I guess you didn't really know there were aliens at the start, but you do find out like it's kind of like an invasion of the body snatchers kind of movie. Robert Rodriguez directs it, which we love him as a director, especially when he's doing like horror. Just before he got lost in the kids stuff. 
<laughs> exactly. Before like Spy Kids and all that stuff. You got Elijah Wood. Josh Hartnett again pops up on our thing. You got uh, Clea Duvall, Jordana Brewster, Sean H- uh, Hattesey. Um, great fun cast. Uh, the the when you do see the inevitable alien aspects, I think it works really really well. But what sells this movie, what makes this movie work, is is the dynamics of the the students or the main characters in the film. Robert Patrick plays a great kind of villain character. Best pro- his best performance probably since T one thousand, in my opinion. Um, I really enjoy this movie quite a bit. Uh, most people, I think, who are you know been around since then, which I say that it's like nineteen ninety eight. It's not like it's like ages ago. I, th- I feel like if you were of the age, you probably saw the fact. If you weren't, then you probably have never heard of this movie, and which is why you should watch it. But, yeah. And it was written by Kevin Williamson, who did the Scream movies. So. Exactly. So if you like that kind of dialogue, you'll probably really like this one as well. Um, next, we are going to go with October 20th, which is Wait. Family... What? My, my alien pick. Oh, I thought we... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought my brain was going into that. We already went to it. But yes, yes, because yours is something unique. I want to hear this one. My alien pick uh, is the one that it does include aliens. It's not necessarily the single main focus of the movie. Uh, it's a movie called Freaks of Nature uh, from 2015. Uh, this movie stars Nicholas Braun, Mackenzie Davis, who Sean and I both love. Uh, mm-hmm. Vanessa Hudgens is in it. Uh, Keegan Michael Key, Joan Cusack, Bob Odenkirk, uh, Pat Oswalt, Dennis Leary, Rachel Hare. It's it's a great cast. It's a huge cast of people. Uh, Werner Herzog is in this. May Whitman is in this. I mean, come on, this keeps going on and on. Um, this is a movie that when it was originally being made, it was called Kitchen Sink. And the reason it was called Kitchen Sink is because this, this is a movie that has uh, werewolves and it has uh, zombies and it has vampires and uh, they basically and humans. And they all live in this world, in this world where they've learned to like, get along. They're kind of their own. They have their own like, you know, clans or cliques or whatever. They don't necessarily all get along, but they all live together in this world peacefully for the most part, uh, but then aliens start to invade, and so they have to work together to fight off the aliens. Um, clearly from the cast, you can tell it is a comedy, uh, and it is it is weird, uh, <laughs> but it is a ton of fun. If you like that kind of, you know, the Keegan-Michael Key, the Patton Oswalt, all those kind of people, they have that certain Bob Odenkirk, a certain brand of comedy yeah, to them. I love uh, it. You can tell those people are obviously are all like parents and faculty in the movie. Um, the, the main characters are more the, the younger crowd. Um, but it it's uh it's a lot of fun and I would definitely recommend that one. Um it is currently mm, stars. Nobody has stars, but get a free trial. Watch the movie. Uh, next we're going October 20th, which is family friendly horror. So this is more of your not real rated R, maybe something you could watch with kids and have them not get nightmares from it. Um, what was your pick for family friendly horror? Uh, mine is actually the ultimate to me uh, gateway horror film for kids. Uh, this is a, a, a Leica animation. Uh, who did the first film was Coraline. I believe this was their second one. It was Paranorman. Um, this is a movie. Honestly, when it was coming out, I had like no interest in seeing this movie. I'm like stop motion animation has not impressed me that much. Uh, I didn't think the trailers were all that great. But I went and saw this movie just because I heard it was good, and I love this movie. Um, it, stop motion animation for what for what stop motion animation is, they do it better, I think, than anyone else in the world. I think it's very well done. Um, I the, the voice cast includes Cody Smith McPhee, uh, Anna Kendrick, Casey Affleck, Leslie Mann, Jeff Garland, Christopher Vince Plast, John Goodman. Uh, it goes on and on and on from there. Uh, this is a movie that it's kind of a love letter to horror movies it clearly has a it clearly has a love of horror movies the character in in this movie loves horror movies but it is a horror movie obviously in and of itself as well um but you can you can tell that it's kind of it it introduces kids to horror in a way that's not going to scare them to death but it it's hard to describe but it makes it it made it so interesting like my kids i had them watch this and also like hey i want to watch some actual zombie and horror movies things like that and i'm like hey it did its job um it's just i think it introduces kids to the whole concept of horror movies in, in a really good way and it is actually a very touching story too especially towards the end there's some real emotional moments to it uh and that one is currently available to watch on the roku channel <laughs> online or if you have the app i've it's actually free. never seen paranormal so i i'm just not a big stop motion fan <laughs> The Roku channel, home of weird, the Al, weird Al Yankovic biopic. 
which we talked about on last week's episode that I'm yes, very, very excited for. Um, mine is a film that came out last year. It was on my most surprised uh, rankings because I went in just with like, literally this movie hooked me to watch it just because of one uh, casting. And then just was watching. I was like, this movie is flipping awesome. And is like the perfect horror movie for kids. Plus it has more scarier elements to the point where it's like, it's going to scare little kids, but it can gate, like almost like I said, gateway them into potential, you know, more adult horror. And that is Netflix's Nightbooks. Um, Nightbooks basically follows the character, this character, Alex, uh, played by Winslow uh, Figley. Uh, basically, he's a kid who loves writing scary stories to the point where he's now dubbed the weird kid. And basically, you know, he gets upset because no one goes to his birthday party. And he basically gets captured by a witch played by Kristen Ritter, which that was the hook to get me to watch. It was Kristen Ritter as a, as a witch. And basically, she basically tells him, you must write a scary story for me every night or I'll kill you. And that is the pl- and then he you know, he meets another girl who's there and she basically has to like clean and cook and all this kind of stuff. And it's about them basically trying to escape the witch. It is shot beautifully. It's got some great horror dynamics. Like some some definitely some moments where I'm like, damn, if I was a kid, this would scare the shit out of me. But this is a kid's movie. Um, there are certain scenes that are shot so beautifully that I'm like, this is a Netflix film. And this probably should have been released in theaters because I think this would have done really well in theaters. And it kind of blew me away. Um, I will say Winslow uh, Fagley, who plays Alex, he does overact a little bit in the movie, but he, it was one of his first ever performances. He's actually done a few more movies since this. Um, he's, he actually did talk about him in a movie uh, last week in our, our fall preview. Um, but it, uh, it's definitely a movie that I was go in with the lowest of low expectations and it blew me away with how much I enjoyed it almost to the point where I will probably rewatch this around Halloween time every year. Cause I really liked the film overall. So, and that's on Netflix night books. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Also, Kristen Ritter's just having so much fun being this character, which if you love Kristen Ritter, then you're going to love her performance in the film. Uh, going to our October 21st. It's so bad. It's good. So we are picking movies that, are really considered bad films, but we enjoy them nonetheless. Um, mine is considered a cult classic. It is a film that, for the most part, you either unabashedly love it because it's so bad, or you're just like, this is just dog shit. But I've watched, this is one of the first horror movies I watched when I was a kid. And I've said this on the show before, I'm terrified of clowns. I don't like clowns. If a clown gets near me, I'm liable to not get the fuck out. Um, I couldn't watch it for the longest time as a kid because I thought it was a killer clown. Then I realized that it was an alien, and I was like, oh, okay, I can watch it now. But this one, I was able to watch and watch with enjoyment, and that is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This movie is so campy, 80s, like, cheesy horror, but... These it's it's about like these aliens that are once again disguised as clowns or from a clown planet or something like that. Brian's actually watched this recently, so he knows the plot a little bit better than I have. I haven't watched this in ages. I'm not sure I know the plot any better than you do. Though. But it's basically like an alien, like you know, aliens, but they're they're clowns and they come down to Earth and they basically trap people. But when they capture them, they put them in like cotton candy cocoons yeah. and then eat them. And that's the movie. And then you know you got your regular like 80s like typecast kind of horror characters. Where with a fair and a small town and all this kind of stuff, but I, from what I remember, because I haven't watched it in a very long time, I enjoyed this movie. But I, even as a kid, I was like, "This is not a good movie." But I like this, and I know a lot of people who will who will carry a torch for this film. So definitely, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. If you guys have not checked it out, that is my so bad it's good. Which it might not even be good, but it's so bad that it's worth mentioning. Movie for me, uh, Brian. What was your pick? Uh, Killer Clowns on Plex, Pluto TV, and Showtime. Um, and, I, and I will say, I, I I did finally watch it just earlier this month. Um, I didn't it, I didn't consider it so bad. It's good. However, I wonder if it's if I had watched it like with a group of friends, I bet I would have enjoyed it more. Oh, it's totally a mystery. It's totally our stinker. It's yeah. totally a stinker film where you and yeah. I would watch it together. And we would probably. Uh, so I will, I will admit, I, I may not have watched it in the in the, in the prime the environment. Right 
Uh, my pick is one that came actually last year for two holidays. Um, my pick is a movie called Thanks Killing from 2008. Uh, the uh, the subtitle on the uh, poster is Gobble Gobble Motherfucker. Um, the the one line plot synopsis on Letterbox says a homicidal turkey axes off college kids during Thanksgiving break. Um, and that's all this movie is. It's it's a turkey who's going around killing people, and it's the whole thing is done with a turkey puppet, like an obvious puppet. It's clearly low budget. It's clearly one of those that's meant to be so bad, low budgety that it's funny. It's not just that it was a poorly made movie. Um, it's totally cheesy. It's campy. Um, the ways they can find for a turkey to kill people get very creative as this movie goes on. Um, they actually made a sequel called Thanks Killing 3. Um, there is no 2. Actually, the plot of 3 is he's trying to kill the people who made Thanks, Ki- Thanks Killing 2, which took place in space, and it was so bad he wanted to kill everybody who made 2. But 2 doesn't actually exist. Uh <laughs> But anyway, uh, I would recommend this. This is definitely the kind of movie that you should watch uh, with friends. Maybe, maybe gather up. If you don't watch it in October, gather around on Thanksgiving and watch this movie with your family instead. Maybe only the adults. Maybe after the kids go to bed, watch this movie uh, while you're doing your online shopping. Uh, because it, it's a ton of fun to just sit and just laugh at the ridiculousness of this movie. Uh, and you can watch it currently on uh, for free on Vudu, on Tubi TV, and on Pluto TV. Next, we're going to October 22nd, which is our slasher movie. We both decided we were not going to pick anything Scream um, because that's basic. We wanted to pick something different. Um, so, Brian, what was your pick for your slasher film? Yeah, I decided to avoid uh, most of the major franchises. Not not that I don't like – I like a lot of movies in, in the main franchises, but one that I wanted to give a little more attention to another one. Uh, and this is a recent one from 2018 called Hellfest. Um, this is a movie that uh, takes place uh, primarily at basically this, uh, I don't, I don't want to say haunted house. It's like a whole complex. Like, you know, you know how Halloween time, they open up these things like that's a haunted well, house. It's an amusement park. An amusement park, essentially, yeah. yeah. Um, but they said the whole Halloween setting, there's like, you know, killers and scary rides and all kind of things everywhere. And uh, basically there's an actual serial killer in there actually killing people. And of course, you have people to see him, they watch it happen, just think it's part of the show and things like that. And everyone there is in costume, so you have a hard time finding out who the killer is, things like that. Um, this one is a movie that I thought actually was uh, uh, very fun. I thought it was very original. Um I think that it wasn't. It didn't quite reach the heights that I wanted it to. It's not become like one of my favorite Halloween movies of all time or anything. But I very much enjoyed this. I think it's a. It's it's nice to have a new slasher film once in a while that's not connected to a franchise. Um, I kind of hoped they'd go on and make more because it did leave it open for a sequel. Uh, but so far they haven't, and so I don't see that really happening. But uh, this is one that I would definitely recommend uh, checking out. Uh, although right now it is not free anywhere. Yeah, this was, I watched that this year for the first time, and that's kind of what my thought was too. Is like the potential is there to make this great. First time out, it did enough to make me want to see more, but it didn't like blow me away. But it was enough to go, I like the elements of what they're trying to. It's do. like I love, I love the setting. I love yes. the setting of this movie. Haunted, I, I, or not even a haunted music park, but a music park that's based around horror stuff, and there's a killer inside it. That just sounds like. First of all, I just want to go to this park, this, this, this theme park. And it's not just like, you know, like my local Six Flags has their Fright Fest. It's not just that. This is like all out horror. Yeah. And I, so I love the setting. I, I love the concept of it. Um, I think there's a lot of really good scenes in it. Just overall, it didn't come quite what I wanted it to, but I still very much enjoyed it. Uh, mine, I did go the regular slasher route. I did pick a film that is slasher elements, but I did go with more of the um unique one and i went with the nightmare on elm street franchise but this time i went with new nightmare uh so basically the uh west craven's first um basically <clears throat> stab at doing a meta with this um i actually think it, it was done really well but it was one of those things where i don't think i think a lot of people liked it but i didn't think a lot of people got it or understood well, I think there was two things working against it. One, it was following up on Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. So people were like, A, I thought this was done. Yeah. And plus the last few weren't very good. And then two, they're going to New Nightmare, which, which like you said, it's like, like, what is this concept? I don't understand what's going on. I'm sorry. Anyway. Yeah, because that's basically what it is. It's basically following the real life actress, uh, Nancy, um, um, 
or not Nancy, Heather Langenkamp. The girl who plays Nancy, Heather Heather Langenkamp, and like Robert England's in it, but he's he's Freddie, but he's also himself, and Wes Craven's in it as Wes Craven, and it's basically that Freddie is actually breaking into the real world and attacking Heather, thinking that she's Nancy and all this kind of stuff, mm. and then you have her child and all that, and it's definitely Freddie's designed differently in this because it's the real Freddy and not the Freddy from the movies. And I like just the way they shot this and the way they were able to take something that we all know, which is Freddy Krueger, but modernize it and meta it to do something unique and different with it. And I thought it worked incredibly well, but that was still before Scream and all this where people still really weren't getting this. I think Scream was kind of the first to really kind of go, eh, hey, we're doing this. Oh, that's really funny and unique. Well, yeah, New Nightmare did it, but you didn't like that kind of thing. And um, I think I think it was it was really, really well done. Um, and if you guys have never checked that one out, or if you guys don't remember it being that good when you saw it, watch it now with where we're in a world where meta is a normal thing. You guys will probably appreciate it a lot more now than you did back then. That um, was on HBO we, Max. What's that? That is on HBO Max. Yes. Uh, going to October 23rd, we're picking Haunted House uh, movies. And I picked one that I, once again, just like with um, uh, what, Dawn of the Dead, I this movie's not as good as I remembered it, but it's still worth mentioning. Um, and that's 13 Ghosts. I mean, who here who loves horror has not seen 13 Ghosts? The, it basically follows a family, uh, uh, Tony Shalhoub, Shannon Elizabeth, when she's still, I mean, she's still attractive. I mean, she was still coming off like the American Pie, like Nadia, like thing. Yeah. And basically, Tony Shalhoub's was his uncle, I think it was his uncle, his uncle dies and basically leaves him his house. And so they move into the house and it's basically a glass house. But what he doesn't realize is that there are 12 to 13 ghosts hidden and locked in this house and uh, basically they start getting released and what's unique and what what makes this movie so much fun is the different type of ghosts i mean you have you have the uh oh god i'm blanking all their names but you have like the super crazy one with with the um with the cage on his head and you have the naked one um then you have like the big baby with the little with the little old lady you, there's so many weird unique ghosts in this movie that I wish we got more time to spend with all of them. But what we do get of them is a lot of fun. Now the human cast or the, the family cast, I mean, they're kind of campy and like the little kids annoying and uh, the nanny is your typical. Let's, let's have the, you know, the African American be the slangy, funny, like type and say, you know, weird, you know, saints here because that's what it was back in the time instead of giving her a real more fleshed out character. But the character designs for the ghosts and everything like that is great. Matthew Lillard and Tony Shalhoub are both solid in the film. Shannon Elizabeth's kind of playing just the screamer in the movie. But nonetheless, it is... Who played the uncle again? Someone big. Uh, Just clicked away from it, sorry. The actual oh, uncle. F. Murray Abraham. Yeah, F. Murray Abraham. Um, he's solid in the film as well. Like I said, the movie itself is probably average at best, but the, it's the character design of all these ghosts that really make you want to watch this and check this out. Um, Brian's pick was also a Weekend Crusaders pick. It was. Yep. Um, yeah, so this one... I, 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 I think Ghost was as well, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, that's right. It was. I think so, yeah. Uh, no, so I picked uh, Stir of Echoes, which isn't isn't I, 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 not your typical idea of a haunted house, but it's it's ghosts, which originally I think we would call it ghosts slash haunted houses, um, but it does take place in a house. So there you go. Um, Stir of Echoes is a movie uh, that stars Kevin Bacon. Um, it's directed by David Cap David Cap, who's known mostly for writing everything from Jurassic Park to Mission Impossible, Panic Room, Spider Man, all kinds of stuff. Um, but he directed this one. Uh, and this one is just a really great, uh, largely a psychological horror movie. I mean, there, there's ghosts in it, um, but it's more like this guy is being driven mad by these visions of these ghosts he's having. I mean, it's a kind of a breakdown of him and his whole family, kind of in the way that like uh, uh, Richard Dreyfuss in Close Encounters of the Third Kind is kind of just affecting his whole, his whole life. Um, and it becomes also this murder mystery where he's trying to get to the bottom of this thing that happened in the past that has to do with these ghosts that he's seen. Um, yeah, I mean, this is it's 
it was a very impressive movie. I just love the style of it. Um, it takes place in Chicago, which you know I, I love seeing movies take place in Chicago. Um, so this is one I would definitely recommend. It is currently on Peacock and the Roku Channel. Yeah, I also was uh, surprised about. Um, now most people don't know her, but I know her because of uh, House, How I Met Your Mother, and Once Upon a Time. Uh, Jennifer Morrison, like mm-hmm. young Jennifer Morrison. Also, Captain Kirk's movie. mom. Yeah, and Captain Kirk's mom. <laughs> um, when she pops up, I was like, "Oh my god, is that Jennifer Morrison!" Like, yeah, I, was so I, I, like I found the movie back in what ninety nine. It came out. Didn't think anything of her. And like after like you know, I'd seen other movies and Once Upon a Time and all that stuff. I watched. I'm like, wait, is that Jennifer Morrison? Sure enough. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Um, going to October 24th, we're doing one with a vampire. Um, I, I'll i go first on this one. This is a movie that both Brian and I love. This is a remake that is better than the original, hands down. Um, I do enjoy I, the original, though. What's that? I do enjoy the original, though, but it's very 80s. But yes, but the the new one I think I think does way better. I, I love this movie so much. I've watched this movie... I've lost track of how many times I've watched this movie. I just love the cast, and that is Fright Night. Um, Fright Night, like I said, great cast. You got Anton Yelchin. Colin Farrell is having a blast in this movie. And you know who else is having a blast? David Tennant is having a blast in this movie. Tony Collette, uh, once again, another Tony. I think Tony Collette and Josh Hartnett are the ones we've been naming the most in, in this episode. Um, you've got uh, Imogene Poots, you got Chris from Ms. Plus, you got Dave Franco. It's a great cast. It's funny. Um, the horror elements really, really work. I also think if you are a fan of uh, Dystopia with Shia LaBeouf, I think if you guys like that kind of film, Fright Night Disturbia. works. Or just, what did I say? Dystopia? You said Dystopia, yeah. I meant Disturbia, sorry. It's clarifying for the audience. But yes. No, 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 you're good. No, I, I, as soon as I was like, I said that wrong. <laughs> uh, if you guys like Disturbia, Fright Night's going to be real easy because it's got that, like, next door neighbor who's really, you know, instead of being a, a killer, he's, well, I mean, he's a killer. He's a vampire. Um, it's so much fun. It's, it's it, I don't want to say it's hip because that makes us sound old. But it's so, it's just, it's such a good movie. It really is. And like I said, Colin Farrell, is so like just awesome in this movie. He well. is, but I will say my favorite part of this movie is David Tennant. David Tennant is great. David Tennant is so good. In this movie. I love this movie so much. Um, what is, your favorite part of the movie? I never heard of, and then I saw the trailer, and now I want to see this movie so damn bad. So real quick, Fright Night is on Amazon Prime. If everyone wants to watch that, um, Fright Night actually was the first one that jumped to my mind that would have been my pick, but I'm glad Sean chose it because it gave me an opportunity to pick another one. And I picked a movie from 2015 called Blood Sucking Bastards. Um, really, all you need to know about this movie is it's office space, but with vampires showing up. And that's really all you need to know about this movie. Um, it stars uh, Fran Kranz, who you mostly know as the stoner guy from Cabin in the Woods. Uh, I believe he was on some Joss Whedon shows, things like that as Doll well. Dollhouse and stuff. Uh, Joey Kern, who I know I've seen places, but I couldn't tell you where. Uh, Super Troopers, he was in that, Cabin Fever, some other things. Um, and Pedro Pascal plays the head vampire, as well as uh, an old an old friend of uh, Fran Kranz's, who's like an old rival to him as well. Um, this, uh, like I said, it's office space. If you like office space, you'll enjoy it. Like, just the office scenes. I was enjoying the hell of the office scenes before the vampires ever showed up. And when the vampires show up, and the whole thing just elevates to another level, and it's just, this is a ton of fun. And I'm surprised more people haven't heard of this movie, and I would recommend everyone to watch this movie. Uh, and you can easily watch it because it is free all over the place on Freebie, on Prime Video, on Plex, Pluto, Roku Channel, Vudu, Tubi TV. Um, but yeah, definitely check this one out. Next, we're going to go with one with the with a werewolf. Uh, Brian, why don't you continue on with yours? Because yours is another movie that I've never heard of. Uh, mine is a little bit of a cheat. Um there's a movie I wanted to slide in somewhere. Oh, first of all, let me just say this. Um, they don't make good werewolf movies. There, I said it. I, I'm like that with witches, and I agree. We were both kind of having um, a hard time finding a werewolf movie. Unless both- I'm going heavy into comedy and picking, like, Teen Wolf or something like that. I, I just I, – I don't – there have been movie werewolf movies I thought were okay. Uh, yeah. Cursed comes to mind. Um, that was okay, but it was not all that great. Yeah. Um, so I, I, there's a movie I wanted to slide in somewhere called Scare Me. Uh, Scare Me is a 2020 movie. Um, it stars Aya Cash, 
who uh, you might know from The Boys or from You Are the Worst, both excellent shows. That's from the director of Werewolves Within, which actually is a decent werewolf movie, but... Not enough for us to mention it on. Not because of the werewolves. Um, <laughs> uh, it also stars... Actually, the director also stars in it, as well as Chris Redd, who most people know from uh, like Saturday Night Live he's on, or um, he popped up in like Pop Star, some other things like that. Uh, but this whole movie is essentially these two people who are staying at cabins, uh, you know, off, off in the middle of nowhere, uh, and there's a power outage, and they basically spend the night just trying to tell scary stories to each other. The whole movie is just two people telling stories. And I'm not talking like they start narrating and it goes and shows the story, like some kind of anthology. You're just watching the two people tell stories. And it is done so well. First of all, Aya Cash is amazing in this. She has so much fun in this Aya movie. Aya Cash is amazing in everything. I know, but especially in this role. Just, I mean, the fact that you, for, for whatever it is, 89 minutes or whatever it is, you can just watch them uh, just telling stories, and it's still riveting, and it's funny. Um, there are definitely still scary moments. Once, once Chris Red shows up, it gets even funnier from there. Um, the first two stories are about werewolves, though. So that's why I said this qualifies a werewolf movie. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it is not currently free anywhere to watch, though. Ah. Oh, well, it, wait, I take that back. See, it, it shows my services first. It is available at AMC Plus and Shutter, neither of which I have right now. Gotcha. Uh, I also, <laughs> I wouldn't say mine's a cheat because mine does have an actual werewolf in it, and it actually is prominent in the film. And that's to the point that they made a documentary named after a line from this movie, and that is Monster Squad. Um, you know, kick the werewolf in the nards. You know, it's like, oh, the werewolf's got oh, nards. God. Um, Which I, I will argue the documentary is actually, I think, even better than this movie, by the way. Anyway, check out the documentary. But go the ahead. documentary is great. Uh, this was probably my f one of my favorite movies as a kid. Um, this is one of those movies that I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for this to get released on DVD and Blu-ray and all that stuff. When it finally did, I lost my mind. Uh, this movie has all the universal movie monsters, basically. They basically all come into the small town, and it's about these bunch of kids are the monster squad kids who basically have to try and like save the town from you know dracula the mummy the creature from the black Lagoon, frankenstein and the wolfman um it's written by shane black who brian loves uh it's 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 campy as shit but it is fun all of the creatures or monsters are practical um everything is just it's just an enjoyable i mean it's, a, it, it's of its time because i mean it was 1987 but it, it, it's so good and it doesn't hold back on its stuff like it doesn't be like oh this is a kids movie eh, we're gonna kill people legitimately in this well it i think that's why this out. movie has not been is not more popular than it because obviously it's it, the concept is gold mine it's goonies with like monsters it's goonies with the universal monsters yeah. and that's gold the problem is it is a PG-13 movie, and it is a very PG-13 movie. It's like, I don't know, like, I wouldn't want my young, when, when my kids were young, I would not have wanted to watch this movie. Because, it, I mean, besides, uh, the, there's gruesome violence, and there's a swearing, and there's some sexual situations and things, so it's it's weird. And it was so good that they made their own theme music for the movie with the Monster Squad song. But, uh, yeah, I, I love Monster Squad. Um, next, we're going to go to October 26th. It's going to be Creature Feature. So basically any movie that's got a creature in it. And I'm also going to go with probably one of my favorite um, films. Uh, I love this movie so damn much. Uh, and that is Cloverfield. Um, Cloverfield uh, is is basically, if none of you guys have seen it, it's, a, it's found footage if like Godzilla attacked New York, except it's not Godzilla. But it's a Godzilla-like creature. And it's about these, um, uh, it's a group of like, I think four or five people who uh, are basically there one's getting ready to like leave the country for like a job promotion. And then as that's happening, this creature attacks New York and, um, you know, directed by Matt Reeves, you know, who directed, you know, the planet of the apes trilogies and, and the Batman that came out uh, this year uh, in terms of cast, you got Michael Stahl, David, TJ Miller, who I know a lot of people don't like TJ Miller. TJ Miller is fucking great in this movie. Um, Lizzie Kaplan, who I personally love, Jessica Lucas, o Odette Annabelle, or is it Annabelle? Apple? Anna Annabelle? Odette? I don't know. I can't remember. Odette Enable, I think is Enable. her name. Actually, oh. she's just changed it now, but I can't remember what the new name is. But. Yeah. Uh, they're all in this. They're great in the film. The creature work is really good in this. Uh, anyone who saw the trailer, who maybe never saw the movie, this is the movie where they're in the street and the freaking Statue of Liberty head goes flying down the street. 
It's all done found footage. It is flipping awesome, and it is insane. There's one moment where, like, the Army National Guard shows up, and it is the most in- intense, insane kind of thing, especially if you have surround sound. Uh, I love this film. Um, and I I was going to have it be for the next day's pick, but it, it, it's a creature, so obviously I went with that one. Um, but, yeah, Cloverfield is flipping amazing. Uh, what was your pick? Uh, my pick is one that I actually, I think I said at the time that it felt like it could have been a Cloverfield sequel, um, more so than the other two actual Cloverfield sequels. Um, but uh, my, mine is one from 2020 called Underwater. Uh, this is a movie starring Kristen Stewart, um, but don't hold that against it, because I did, and I, I was wrong. Doesn't this um, also have T.J. Miller in it? It's also, yeah. T.J. Miller's yeah. in it. Actually, John Gallagher Jr. is in it as well, so it wouldn't really be able to be a Colorfield sequel, because I'd really mess things up, get confusing. But they're in it. Well, I mean, it's it would be messing up for T.J. Miller, too. It's actually yeah. got a bunch of people who, like, it was a who's who of Before There's Stars, because Jessica Henwick is in this, who we've seen show, show a lot of stuff lately. Uh Mamudu Athi, who is Ramsey Cole in the new Jurassic Park movie, uh, he's in this movie. Um, it's got a great cast to it. But Chris, for, what I love about this movie first and foremost is the very beginning of the movie, from the very opening scene, it just jumps right in. There's, there's not, they're not taking time to set up things. They're not, they, it's just they're, we're dropping you in this world, and this is what's happening. And and from the very beginning, it just happens. And then the rest of the movie is very much a case of great atmosphere. It's suspenseful. It's tense. Like you don't know what's going to happen. You're, you know, you feel, you feel just like the characters. You feel the tension going on. Um, and I love the atmosphere of it. When they finally do get to to show you the the creature that is out there, um, which I won't go into a lot of detail on that. Um, but that's very impressive. But th- this is a movie. It's it's 100 about the atmosphere. Um, and like I said, Kristen Stewart was actually very good in it, which surprised the hell out of me. So. Next on October 27th, we're going to go with found footage film, which is why Cloverfield could have gone here, but I went with a different pick for this. Uh, My pick also, Weekend Crusaders pick, and also a movie that Brian despises, but I love, and that is Paranormal Activity. Uh, I think this movie did fantastic for what it was set out to do. They made this movie for like $10,000, and they were able... I, I, I always describe it as they were able to do something that most people can't do. And I know Brian's going to object to this, but at the time they were able to scare the shit out of people with $10,000 powder, a piece of string and noise. And it's basically about these two characters, uh, Kate and Micah. Also that's the actor and actress's name. So they try to make it more real because it's found footage that they actually got the actors that played their you know real names. And it's basically about this character, Kate, who has been, basically haunted by this you know ghost slash demon character and she's trying to put a stop to it and she's trying to figure it out while uh her fiance mika or micah is basically kind of being like the tough guy like i'm not scared and all this i'm gonna fil- i'm gonna film all this because i think it's cool and just shit hits the fan um you know you have this you know little which part that Brian hates is like most of the time stuff happens late at night. So you, you watch them asleep in bed. And then like one night you'll just hear like a bang or the door move slightly. And then the next night, nothing happens and so forth. But as it gets going and, it, and starts revving up and revving up, it's a great movie. Um, I will say if you have the choice of being able to watch it, watch it, the original ending that they, that they made for this, not the, ending that went on to start the franchises because the original ending is a thousand times better than the ending that we saw in theaters. So if you have that ability to do that, please do so. Uh, but I love this film. I think it does a fantastic job of what it sets out to do, but Brian hates that film. So go ahead, Brian, to your movie. Yeah. Well, all I'll say about that movie is you can watch it on prime or on Paramount plus. Um, okay. So for found footage movies was kind of difficult for me because there are, especially in the horror genre, there are a ton of found footage movies out there. The problem is most of them really suck. Um, if you can get one that's like, yeah, that wasn't bad. That's like gold for a found footage movie. Um, I true. think part of the problem is that people tend to think, oh, we don't have a lot of money. We want to make our first film. Let's make it found footage. That way it can be cheap, but it's supposed to look cheap. So whatever. Um, but there have been a few I enjoyed. Um, I thought Quarantine was decent. Um, there's one called the pyramid, which is actually interesting. The one I picked though was called afflicted. And this is essentially a found footage vampire film. 
Uh, it takes place in uh, two friends in a tour of Europe. Uh, one of them contracts what they think is a mysterious illness, but then it goes on and from there. Um, I won't give out any more spoilers, but it does involve vampires. Um, this is one that I thought was, uh, you know, in the found footage genre, instead of just having like something chasing you or ghosts or things like that, this gave you something a little bit different. And I really enjoyed the way this was done because um, it kind of has that feeling of there's something out there, but also like one of the friends is starting to turn into one of them. So it becomes a whole uh, a whole thing there. Um, this one is available to watch on Amazon Prime as well. All right. Next, we're going to go to October 28th, which is One with a Curse. Uh, Brian, what is your pick for that one? Uh, mine, I just rewatched last night again, and that is 2020's Freaky. Uh, Freaky it comes from the mind of Christopher Landon, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite horror directors because he did Happy Death Day 1, Happy Death Day to you, Freaky, a Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, and I won't mention that he did one of the Paranormal Activity movies because we'll forgive him for that. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is essentially, uh, whereas Happy Death Day was like Groundhog Day, the horror version, uh, Freaky is uh, Freaky Friday, the horror version. Uh, it's, a, it's a body swap movie. Um, and from what I understand, next he's working on something that he calls a, con a cross between Back to the Future and a horror movie. We'll see what that does. Um, so, yeah, like I said, this is a body swap movie. It's basically uh, Vince Vaughn is a serial killer um, called the, the Something Butcher. I forget the name of the town. Oh, I, shit. The Something I... Butcher. Anyway. Uh, yeah. And he uh, one night it, it, he's trying to kill uh Catherine Newton's character uh Millie with uh this dagger which is supposedly this mystical dagger and something happens basically it causes them to swap bodies so the serial killer is now in this high school girl's body and uh she is in the serial killer's body uh wackiness ensues um I think that what makes this movie especially fun is uh getting to see them kind of play the other person seeing Vince Vaughn play basically a teenage girl uh, so it, it is, is so hilarious um, I think I think Catherine maybe overplays the pure evil sinister look she just looks like she's possessed by a demon or something as opposed to just being a guy who wants to kill people but uh, it, it still provides for a lot of fun um, yeah I, this this is one that I, I think except for it has like a double ending it has this extra whole 10 minutes that didn't need to be there at the end of the movie. Um, I think this is actually a really good movie. I thought, again, is very original, and I enjoyed it mostly because of Vince Vaughn. So. Yeah, I do agree that that extra that extra ending was unnecessary and unneeded. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. the the friends The friends cast I think is pretty fun with it as well. Um, and yeah, Vince Vaughn being funny again to me was great. I love Freaky. Yeah, and that's on HBO um, Max. HBO Max. Uh, I am going with a uh, another film from Sam Raimi. Um, actually, no, this is the first one because we did the Evil Dead remake. We didn't do the other Evil Deads. But I'm going with Drag Me to Hell. Uh, Drag Me to Hell is a movie um, that I remember going into it. I was just like, okay, it's Evil Dead. It's not, but it also kind of is a little bit. Um, it's got that Sam Raimi comedic gross-out horror uh, but it's, it's, I, it's more about like a, kind of like a gypsy kind of like curse kind of thing. You got, um, Allison Lohman, who I, I like for the most part in a lot of her movies, you got Justin Long, who still to this day, I think looks like my best friend, uh, one of my best friends, Chris Moore. Um, but it's, it's basically, uh, like I said, this, this bank teller basically cannot give this gypsy woman a loan or an extension or something like that. And so she gets cursed. And she basically has like so many days before like uh, basically hell opens up and drags her to hell. And it's just her trying to find ways to end the curse and stop it with Sam Raimi's, you know, horror, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of visuals in it. And it's, it's weird. It's got weird moments. So you're like, what the fuck is going on? But it just works. And I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun with it. It's, it's one of those that's like, Whenever I think of Sam Raimi, obviously Evil Dead pops up first, then Spider Man, and then Drag Me to Hell. Um, so that was my pick for One with a Curse. I like the ending uh, of it as well. What's that? I like the ending of this movie. I well. did like the ending of it as well too. Um, next, we're gonna go to October 29th, which is, which is Stephen King, and this is me going back to being basic bitch because obviously it's Stephen King. So I naturally, if I had to go with his best movie, it'd be Green Mile, but that's not a horror film, so I can't pick Green Mile. Uh, so I'm going to go with his, in my opinion, his second best horror film, or his best horror film, but his second best movie, 
and that is it chapter one um like i said it the miniseries back in the 90s uh was i think really well done but it night one was the best For a part TV of miniseries it. in the 90s yeah yeah but and then night two when they were adults it didn't really work as well same thing kind of goes with with the practical one you know when it's the kids it's great when it's the adults it's fine but not as good and it chapter one is fantastic bill skarsgård i was not sold on him being pennywise i think we all wanted will poulter to be him but he knocks this role out of the park um the the kids cast uh i'm blanking on all the, the kids but they were all great in the film um you got uh, uh i know you're pulling it up so ben wolfhard sophia lillis jack dylan grazer jaden martell yeah, they were all great in the film. The practical horror, the scary horror of it all works really well. I I loved this movie, and which is hard for me to say because you know how I feel about clowns, but I loved It Chapter 1. I also really liked It Chapter 2 as well, but It Chapter 1 is definitely the way better film. Um, I do also like your pick too. This would have been a nice number two choice for me as well. So, so first of all, It is on HBO Max and Netflix. I also want to take a moment since we just talked about both Bill Skarsgård and Justin Long, uh, go see Barbarian. Uh, it's did a, you go see it finally? I did. Uh, it's a movie I wanted to put on my list. I literally can't find a category to put it in, but I would recommend it, so go see that movie. Um, but my pick as well in this category, uh, what did I pick in this category? Ah, yes, Gerald's Game. Uh, Mike the first Flanagan. Game. That's, my third, that's Mike Flanagan's third film. <laughs> My Flanagan's third film, uh, this one starring the gorgeous Carla Gugino, who we all love around here, uh, Bruce Greenwood, Henry Thomas, who, of course, is, does Mike Flanagan's everything, apparently. Uh, Katie Siegel's in this. Shocker. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> essentially, this is uh, when a husband and wife go off to, you know, some uh, like like cabin hotel in the middle of nowhere uh, to have, like, a romantic weekend or whatever. Uh, her husband, like, basically wants to tie her up for this sex game. Uh, and then he dies. Um, this yep. is all early. In the movie. It's in the trailers. I'm not spoiling anything. Yeah, this is the plot. We're not. Uh, away the movie is then that she is stuck there, and uh, all these things happen, which are basically uh, threatening her life. Uh, I'm not going to go into any of the specifics of it, but it's just it's one of those movies that just takes place essentially a single location. Um, it's got some great and really at times some gross action going on to it. Um, However, it's it's all about uh, the tension and the atmosphere, again, that they provide here. And the movie lives or dies on the performance of Carla Gugino, who does an excellent job here. That's what I was going to say if you didn't mention it. Like this, this movie literally is all about Carla Gugino's good performance because she is literally on her own. With yeah, it lists this whole long supporting cast, but honestly, I don't remember where half these people were because I, I remember 99% of the movie just being her. In the her room. and like her husband's body. Yeah, yeah, on the floor, basically on the floor. It's a great gig for Bruce Greenwood. Just show up and lay down on the floor for a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, take get five lines and then just lay down. Like you're good. Just try not to move <laughs> while Carla acts around you. <laughs> right. so, it's so good. Uh, next, we're gonna go to October thirtieth. We're gonna do a movie with a religious um, kind of background or cult kind of background. Um, what was what's your pick on that one? Uh, mine is kind of a horror almost action movie. Um, I picked Legion from 2010, uh, which stars Paul Bettany, who doesn't get enough lead roles, I will say. Around this time, he was finally starting to get some. He did Legion. He did Priest. He did a few other things. But Legion, uh, it's got Dennis Quaid, Lucas Black, Kate Walsh, Tyrese Gibson, Adrian Pilecki, uh, Charles S. Dutton, Kevin Duran, Doug Jones. It's got a great cast to it. Um, basically, uh, Paul Bettany uh, play, plays an angel. Uh, who is basically trying to come and protect this. Uh, Adrian Pilecki is a waitress who's going to have a child. Uh, he needs to protect that child for reasons that become evident later on. Uh, meanwhile, the other angels uh, who basically have, uh, he has basically gone rogue to try to protect her because the other angels don't agree with uh, his take on things. And I won't go into uh, a whole lot of the details on it, um, but it's just, it's it's got definitely some scary moments. It's got some weird ass moments. Uh, it's got some uh, like almost just flat out fight scenes towards the end, but it was just for something that involves angels. It's like, this is kind of a take on angels I hadn't seen before. And I love seeing Paul Bettany in the lead role. Uh, so I recommend this one. Um, it is not available anywhere free right now. All right, mine is a movie. I'm pretty sure you're the one who told me to watch these. I can't remember if it was you or if it was someone else, but I want to say it's you because usually that makes me watch things that I'm not sure to watch. <laughs> uh, this is on Netflix. 
Uh, it's a movie that I, I, I remember going into it. I think I was, I, was, I was just really bored one night. And I was like, there's something to watch. You should watch this. And I was like, this looks stupid. And then I watched it. And I was like, this is freaking great. And then I immediately watched the sequel right after it. And that is Netflix's The Babysitter. Um, basically, like I said, it's about a babysitter. Uh, and you follow the character Cole, uh, played by uh, Judah Lewis. And he's got this huge crush on his babysitter, played by Samara Weaving. And basically, she's babysitting uh you know him overnight and then her friends come over robbie amel who is great in this film uh he, he gives me those kind of like almost like chris evans scott pilgrim vibes in the mm-hmm. movie and i love it um also uh hannah may lee bella thorne uh Andrew may lee was the mumbling there. girl from uh, the asian girl from pitch perfect for anybody who remembers yes, it. yes. Yeah. uh bella thorne is is great in it also emily Aylin lynn uh from dr sleep Mm-hmm. Um, she's great in it as well. And <laughs> basically you find out that her, that some are weaving and all her friends are basically trying to do a cult sacrifice to basically like, like get like everything they've ever wanted, like their wishes and stuff like that. And it's basically, you know, Cole trying to survive the night and like basically all this. And it's, it's hilarious. It's brutal. It's, it's, it's just, it's so much fun. Robbie Amell to me is like the fucking MVP of this thing. Uh, and I love this movie. And then, of course, there's the sequel, um, which introduces, I think, Jenna Ortega, one of her very first roles as well. Oh, it's sure. not as good as the first one, but I remember watching it. Mick G's the director, who I actually really like Mick G. I know a lot of people like kind of make him like the Nickelback of directors, but I like Nickelback. I have no problem with Mick G. I like Mick G. Um, but this was, a lot of, this was a movie that I went in with like very, very low expectations and ended up loving this film. I actually can't wait to go back and rewatch these because I just really had a blast, especially the first one. Uh, it did it just go a little crazy at the end, but that's what this movie was made for, was to do that. Um, it's I'm, it's a Netflix movie, right? So it's not gonna, it didn't leave Netflix. Right, they're both on Netflix. Yeah, yeah they're both Netflix movies. So uh, yeah, that's definitely my uh, religious cult or religion slash cult film. Um, next. October 31st, it's Halloween. So naturally, what is the movie we're going to make you pick or to watch? We're both in agreement. We're going to make you, 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 only, you only had one choice for this day. Yeah, we only picked one movie for this day because you want to go Halloween, you want to go trick or treat or go to parties or whatever. So you don't have to watch one movie. It's the obvious one. It's trick or treat. Yeah. It's not fucking Halloween. We're Fuck going to watch Halloween. Yeah. We're going to watch the best Halloween movie ever made in trick or treat. Because that is hands down the best Halloween film ever. Not the best horror movie, but it is the best Halloween movie. Uh, I want them to make a sequel, but then I don't want them to make a sequel because I don't want them to fuck it up. Um, the character, what what do they call the little kid? Uh, Sam. Sam. Sam is such an iconic character already, just because visually. But there's still so many people who don't know trick or treat and it's such a awesome what would you how would you, how would you describe it without giving it away because well, it's, it, it's a I horror anthology it's, it's an anthology but they all like, it's it's three or four different stories but they are all intertwined in kind of that pulp fictiony kind of way yeah um so so it, it, it's it's yeah it, that's really all i need to know it, it, that is that is a perfect way to describe it it's a horror version of pulp fiction <laughs> <laughs> it is a horror. That might be setting your sights a little, a little too high, but I mean, in, in terms of these, sty- in terms of these style of the anthology intertwining, yes, it is definitely that style. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's got a great cast around it. Um, uh, of course, I don't have the cast pulled up in front of me because I'm was too busy talking about the babysitter. Anna Paquin, Dylan Baker, Brian Cox, Leslie Bibb. Uh, actually, those are only main, like no, like recognizable names. Well, I know, I know the uh, the kid from Bad Santa is in it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's their names, but I think I think people most people wouldn't recognize most of the names. But yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it <laughs> is. It, it's it's so good. It really is so good, and it's it is the must watch on every Halloween. It, I've I've watched this movie. I think every Halloween, probably since it came out in 2007. I've watched it every Halloween since. I think Brian, you said you kind of do that the same way, or at least watch it maybe in the month of October. No, I, I think I think most Halloweens I, I do. I, I 
I'm either going out with my kids or I'm home handing out candy. And as soon as lights go off, people go to bed, pop in trick or treat and watch that. Exactly. Trick or treat is the only choice to watch on Halloween. Not Michael Myers, but Sam. And uh, that is it for our Halloween special. We hope you guys um, enjoyed this list. We hope you guys watch some of these movies. If you guys have never seen these movies, we hope you guys check them out and really enjoy our picks because they are movies that we all really like. I know Brian's named a few that I'm going to have to watch because I've never seen before. And Brian does paint a pretty good picture on most of them, except some of them aren't available. So I'll have to figure out a way to get in touch. I'll make you watch them with me online. That, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do it that way. Um, but if you guys did enjoy this episode of the week of the Movie Crusaders, hit that like, share, and subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on the Movie Crusaders. And of course, you can follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Coming up next, uh, it's October, so we don't know. We're going to be watching horror movies probably, but um, in terms of what's coming out here, uh, watch our episode from last week where we went over the fall pre preview special where we basically discussed – all the big movies coming out from October all the way to the end of the year. Um, those movies we will have reviews for if they're available to watch because we're starting to get into that time frame of the year where a lot of them are indie films that maybe aren't getting theatrical release. So we kind of just have to wait for them to become available to watch. Uh, but we will have reviews for them when they pop up if there are movies that I actually care about or Brian cares about talking about. Um, in terms of shows... For the month of October, we have not decided on what we want to talk about yet, uh, but when we do, we will post that on uh, Facebook and on Twitter and all that kind of stuff, and then we will have those those shows ready for you. Um, like I said, last week we shot the uh, end of summer and fall movie preview, and the month before, or the week before that, we did our uh, movie crusaders chat about sister slash twin movies. So feel free to check those out. Uh, as well as our reviews for Don't Worry, Darling, and basically everything else that's come out at the end of the month. They kind of they kind of stockpiled September at like the, the backlog of the last two months with all their movies. So there's a lot of movie watching this past week. But nonetheless, uh, Brian, anything else you want to add before we end this episode for Halloween? No, just uh, if you guys check out anything we recommended and you like it, please let us know either in the comments here or hit us up on Letterboxd. I'd love to hear what you thought about it. Yeah, trust me, we, we, will def we definitely don't mind listening to, or hearing from you guys on what you liked or disliked or, hey, I never heard of the Final Girls and I thought it was fantastic or Freaks of Nature or Scare Me or anything like that. Let us know if you watch them. Let us know what you think. We hope you guys enjoyed them as much as we enjoyed talking about them with you guys. Until next time, I'm Sean Wasserkrug. That is Brian Michaels. We are the Movie Crusaders. And until next time, in case we don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders. And have a happy October slash horror Halloween. You're still here. It's over. Go home.